presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Well, the Tigers have escaped two solid days of rain to the beautiful sunshine of Atlanta, Georgia, and here's what they face. They're a game and a half back in the wild card standings. We welcome you to Turner Field in Atlanta. Game one in this weekend series, Tigers and the Atlanta Braves. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen, glad to have you with us here for a big weekend of baseball, to be sure, Rod. Pretty simple for the Tigers here. Win, win as many as you can, and then maybe hope for a little bit of help. You know, that's just what Brad Ausman said today. He said this is the fun time of year. When they got back together in spring training in February, this is what they all envisioned. Last week of the season, playing meaningful games. They're playing meaningful games. Let's go get it done. All right, Mount, it's another big start for another young guy. Daniel Norris gets the call here tonight. They are going to lean on him again. You know, his stuff has been outstanding the last five starts or so. His fastball is getting up to 95 miles an hour. Outstanding breaking ball. Really good changeup. He'll need that good breaking ball today. They've got a, quite a few left-handers in their lineup that have good numbers against lefty so he'll need that breaking ball down and away from those guys but take a look at his numbers here three earned runs allowed or less in 18 consecutive starts as a matter of fact the club has won five of Daniel's last six starts but this is arguably the biggest start of Daniel's career the one thing they worry about Mario is the fact that he needs to tone it down a little right. bit and if he tones it down today against a very good Atlanta Braves team Tigers should come out of here with a victory tonight. All right, let's play some baseball. Game one in this series coming up. But right now, we send you back to the Call Sam Studios and Johnny Kane.
Back here at Turner Field in Atlanta tonight the Tigers and the Atlanta Braves game one in this three game weekend series and the right hander Matt Whistler is getting set to do battle here tonight against the Tigers the Tigers starting lineup presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers has Kinsler Maven and Cabrera in the top three spots Ian has been red hot. You've got J.D. Martinez up and then Castellanos McCann Iglesias and Norris were in a National League Park. That means no D.H. and the pitcher will bat and again they are facing the offerings of Matt Whistler. Yeah, Whistler features a four pitch mix his fastball goes anywhere from 90 to 96. He loves to throw a slider with runners in scoring position mostly sliders to right handers. He'll use his curveball and change up to the left handed batters. Tigers should be ready to hit that fastball early in the game tonight. Let's take a look at the Atlanta Braves starting defense. It's brought to you by Tim Horton. Now left to right, they've got Kent, they've got Insaarte in center field there. Saying he should win a gold glove out in center field this year. Mark Cake is very steady and right. Swanson Castro up the middle. Garcia, Freddie Freeman on the corners. And Tyler Flowers, former Chicago White Sox backstop behind the dish. All right, here is what the Tigers are facing this weekend. They are trailing the wild card by a game and a half with potentially four games to go. As you know, the Tigers were rained out yesterday, so they may have that makeup game on Monday against the Indians. In the meantime, Baltimore beat Toronto last night, so they are tied up now for the wild card. The Tigers, a game and a half back, they just need to win their games. And uh, that all starts here tonight at Turner Field. Ian Kinsler will get things started for the Tigers and a gorgeous evening for baseball here in Atlanta. And one of the things we do know about the Tigers, they are an outstanding fastball hitting team. And if Whistler comes out throwing lots of fastballs, expect the Tigers to score a few runs early here tonight. Kinsler had a big home stand, 14 for 24. We'll see if that will translate into a big series this weekend. The first pitch is hammered down the left field line, and it is gone. No, it is fouled. Just foul. Oh, Kinzer almost gave the Tigers a 1-0 lead. And he will jump you. He has done that in the past. Just down the line and just, I mean, barely foul. That thing was looking like it was going to be a leadoff home run all the way until it got close to the foul pole and then just hooked on it. Here's the 0 1 pitch and a swing and a miss. 0 2 now on Kinsler. There's that slider and that Whistler will throw about 39% to the right handed batters, especially when he gets ahead. And take a look at the depth on this pitch. This is absolutely nasty. Bottom just fell out of that slide piece. 0 and 2 on Ian, batting 289 coming in. Whistler on a Brian Ohio. He's a Midwestern kid. Here's a ball that bounces in well in front of the plate. One and two to count. He's only 24 years old. Braves have been a hot team coming in. They have won 10 of their last 11, so the Tigers certainly have their work cut out for them. They have been the hottest team in all of baseball, the Atlanta Braves, and led by their offense for the most part. One and two to count stays on Kinsler, who has hit safely now in 18 of his last 23, and Ian with a six game hitting streak down the stretch. Former Brave Cameron Maven waiting on deck. Now Whistler with the one two. There's a drive in the air to left field. That ball is way back to the wall. Goes Cappy looks up and that one is gone. So Kinsler makes good on a ball that just missed on the first pitch of the game. And now the Tigers have a one nothing lead. And Whistler threw Ian Kinsler back to back breaking balls and then Tyler Flowers he called for the fastball up in the strike zone. And this ball was up in the strike zone but Ian Kinsler still able to get to it and drive it out of the yard for the first run of the game. Take a look at the location of where he wants this pitch. It is up in the strike zone and look at Ian pull his hands up at the top of the strike zone and somehow get on top of it and hit it out for his 28th homer of the year. Exactly the way the Tigers wanted to start this series. It went a couple of rows deep just out of there and the Tigers have a one nothing lead. Whistler had been doing an outstanding job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. He had only given up one home run in his last five starts and that was a problem for him earlier in the year. He was giving up home runs in bunches. And now Ian has tied Lou Whitaker for the most home runs by a second baseman in Tigers history with 28. 
Even shoots one in the air to right field. That'll drop in. Base hit. Boys came to play tonight, Mario. Back to back hits to start this one. Maven is aboard. And I'll be very shocked if Maven is not on the move on one of the first two pitches. Tyler Flowers behind the plate has only thrown out three of 63 this year. So the Tigers, anybody that can run, will be trying to steal a base tonight. Now the Tigers bring up Miguel Cabrera. Still nobody out in the inning. The home run by Kinsler and the single by Mabin. Two fastballs, both hit for home run and also a single by Mabin. Mickey drives one in the air deep to center field. Inciarte to the wall and gone. To dead center, Miguel Cabrera, a two run shot. And yes, indeed, the boys have come to play tonight. I see you, big fella. I see you. Holy cats to dead center. The Tigers have hit two homers and they lead 3 0. And we've gotten the holy cats out of you and then we not have one out yet. Might be an all time record, one. Right? <laughs> 3 0 Detroit. I love it. I love it. The boys came to play. The clubhouse was loose today, though. I mean, the clubhouse was loose. Guys were having a lot of fun and obviously they have come here to play tonight. A lot of Tigers fans here and a lot of cheers in this first inning offensively for Detroit. They are buzzing right now. It's three nothing Tigers. I'll bring up J.D. Martinez. Still nobody out. And J.D. watches one bounce in. <laughs> he put a wrinkle in one after throwing those fastballs to the first three hitters. Tigers can wear out some guys that throw hard. If you throw 94, 95, that is pretty good hitting speed for a lot of these Tigers hitters. 37 home runs now for Cabrera on the year. JD can certainly go deep. And again, the Tigers without a big bat in their lineup in this series. Victor Martinez, but so far, that has not mattered. Whistler has fallen behind 2 0. And a check swing strike. He went around, said DJ Raber. Really, just about everybody in the last homestand for the Tigers had pretty good numbers. And Martinez included 333. Tigers hit 356 on the last homestand, just completed. Here's the 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Whistler had some pretty good numbers in his last five. He had a 3.6 ERA, had won three games. Yeah, he was doing well. Here's the 3 1 pitch. That ball hits sharply right to the shortstop. Swanson with a terrific play to throw out JD. Get the married man off the infield. Oh. Let's take a look at the Miguel Cabrera two run home run over the 400 foot sign straightaway center field. That's a little slider or fastball, cut fastball right up in the strike zone, right in the happy zone of Miguel Cabrera and NC Arte. And it runs out of room in center. Kinsler and Cabrera giving the Tigers an early lead and everything put in play in this game has been a rocket so far. Here is another former Brave Justin Upton. And Jay up looks at a strike on the outer edge 0 and 1. Well if you wanted a quick start to the most important series of the year for the ball club they've gotten it. Whistler with the 0 1 pitch. And that is hammered to right field. That's a fair ball. It'll go to the corner extra bases. Upton is on his way to second, and he will pull in with a double. That is one of the things that has most impressed me about Justin Upton the last six weeks or so, Mario. When he first came back after Brad gave him three days off, he was pulling everything to left field. Then he started going to center field. Now he's going down the right field line. Take a look at where he makes contact with this ball right here. Look at the angle of the bat. That's how you drive balls in that direction. Wonderful balance by Justin Upton. That ball absolutely whistled down the right field oh. line. I'm telling you, everything has been an absolute rocket in this inning. Whistler has not fooled anybody, and for Upton, his 28th RBI of the year. You know, everybody talked about this Braves team and the fact that they've lost 92 games already this year, but they are one of the hottest teams in all of baseball right now. And the Tigers knew that coming into this contest. 
and they were not going to let Atlanta sneak up up on them. Here is Castellanos who recently rejoined the Tigers lineup off the disabled list. You know the Tigers really have not had their regular everyday lineup all that often this year. Maybe a dozen times they've had everybody in the lineup at the same time. That's the core group that's pretty much starting tonight. And that's why if you're Brad Ausmus I guess better late than never but uh, he has really had to deal with a lot of different issues this year injuries to the rotation injuries to some key players. He's done a very nice job this year. And really all season long has uh, maintained a steady hand. One ball to no strikes on Castellanos. Swing and a miss and a big rip there, 1 1. That's going to be the one pitch that might give Castellanos uh, some issues. He's been out of action for about a couple of months now. It's no problem hitting the fastball, but it's tough to recognize the off speed pitches when you haven't had the consistent reps, and he really hasn't had uh, that many consistent reps lately. You had a couple of at bats on the last homestand, doubled in a pinch hitting roll the first day he got back. Checked it and it missed outside two and one. Oh, he went around, says first base umpire Vic Carapazzo. So reverse the count one and two. Nick 18 home runs this year. That represents a career high despite the fact that he's missed 46 games, which ought to tell you the type of season he was putting up before the broken hand. Yeah, he was on his way of hitting 25 home runs this year. Block and no play by Flowers. Two balls and two strikes. And Whistler about to throw his 20th pitch of this first inning. And Whistler's probably out there saying to himself, so this is what American League lineups look like. No doubt. Kinsler Homer to start it. A Maven single, a Cabrera home run, and Upton double. Here's the 2 2 swing and a miss. He struck him out, and Castellanos is out of there. Two gone. By the way, if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow. Get a free small order of curly fries, and we only need one more. Yeah, two thirds <laughs> of the way there to get those curly fries. We're not even out of the first inning. So here's McCann now with two outs. Tigers backstop has hit safely in his last four straight games. Trying to get up and in from second base with two outs. In there is strike call. For McCann, a 223 season, but he has hit 12 home runs, and he's had to battle that uh, ankle that he hurt early in the season. Now the 0 1. That ball popped up. Middle of the infield. It'll be Castro, the second baseman to short center to retire the side, but the Tigers start with a bang. Miguel Cabrera hit the second, the first, off the bat of Ian Kinsler. And the Tigers have an early 3 0 lead.
The bottom of the first inning, Daniel Norris is on the hill for the Tigers. He is presented tonight by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. And biggest start of young Daniel Norris's career, but his teammates have gotten him three runs in the very first inning, so that should allow him to relax and get to that 95 mile per hour fastball, curveball, slider change, all part of his four pitch mix. Here is the lineup that Daniel faces tonight, brought to you by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. For the Braves, in Ciarte Garcia and Freeman, who's been red hot. Kemp, Marcakis, and Flowers in the middle, and their bottom three is Dansby, Swanson, Castro, and the pitcher, Matt Whistler. So here come the Braves now to take their first swings against Norris. And it's in there for a strike, 0 1 on Ender Inciarte. This is going to be a tough test uh, for Daniel Norris. Their first four hitters are all hitting above 300 against left handed pitchers this year. And so it's going to be very important for him to throw first pitch strikes and then expand the strike zone to see if he can get some of these guys to chase. And Ciarte, since the All Star break, had a 351 clip. This entire Braves team. Over the last couple of months has been much improved offensively. Enciarte had a breakout season a year ago playing for the Arizona Diamondbacks hit over 300 with 27 doubles five triples. He stole a bunch of bases Mario and they say he is probably the second best center fielder in baseball behind Kiermaier. They say really? he is legit in center field. Well he recently made a highlight play a leaping catch. Who uh, didn't he though. He's got some good offensive numbers to back it up as well. 99 hits for Inciarte since the All Star break, which is second in Major League Baseball. So they're going to try and get things going here. The Tigers have stung them with a uh, quick three spot. Brian Snicker is the interim manager for the Atlanta Braves. That'll bounce in and away into the backstop it goes. Two and two. And the biggest thing for Daniel, obviously, is just to stay in command, stay in control. Uh, when he does get into trouble, he rushes a little bit. Ball stay up in the strike zone. But once he relaxes and takes deep breaths on the mound, he's able to get that breaking ball down. He's able to get that fastball down, which is going to be very important for him this evening. The chopper to the right side of the infield, Cabrera. And Norris will get there just in time. Daniel's a real good athlete. I mean, even though he falls off to the mound just a little bit here, the fact of the matter is that he recovers fast and he's able to get over to the bag uh, just ahead of NCRT. Nice feed by Miguel, too. So they keep the leadoff man off the bases. Adonis Garcia will stand in now for the Braves. 269 hitter this year. Look at a strike and a check swing 0 and 1. You got to be careful throwing this guy Garcia fastballs up in the strike zone. Some of the Braves people that I talked to today when I got to the ballpark, they say this guy is an outstanding high fastball hitter. On the outer edge. He looking good tonight, Mario. 95 down at the knees. You know, they, you talk about the pace with which he works, and you love to see pitchers work at a really good pace, but I guess you can get too fast at times. Swing and a miss, and he threw it right by. Look out, Ben. Let's take a look at the Tigers' starting defense. It's presented by Beaumont Health. On the left or right, you've got Upton, you've got Maven, you've got JD, you've got Castellanos, Iglesias, Kinsler, and the big fella, Miguel Cabrera, in the infield, and Brian McCann. And putting down the signs tonight for the youngster Daniel Norris. James McCann, excuse me. Threw it right by him at 95. That's what Norris has in his back pocket. And a swing and a miss at 95 by Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Brian McCann used to play here. He did. <laughs> Maybe that's why it seeped into your brain. <laughs> now Norris with the 0 1. And a strike call. Boy, Daniel coming up, throwing strikes. This guy right here looks the part, doesn't he? Six feet, five inches, 220 pounds. Freddie Freeman. He can rate, too. 30 game hitting streak ended last night by Freeman. He hits left handers, too. Left handers don't bother him. He hits the ball the opposite way. He's got power. He's having his best offensive season.
Norris with the one two swing and a miss and Daniel comes out of the bullpen throwing strikes. A couple of punch outs in the first Braves go one two three. Under call, Sam call of the game. The Tigers jumped all over Matt Whistler in the first inning. Kinsler got a fastball upstairs. He jumped ship solo home run. Maven went the opposite way for a single. Then Miguel Cabrera followed him. He went straight away center field for a two-run shot. And look at Upton. He went down the right field line for a double. So the Tigers jumped all over him in the very first inning. All four hits on fastballs. He will make an adjustment this inning. That would be Whistler. Here is Iglesias to get it started for the Tigers. It'll be Iglesias, Norris, and then Kinsler. Tigers sending seven men to the plate in the first inning and scoring three runs. The 0-1 sails outside. One ball and one strike. Iglesias at 2.52. Pulled on the ground to third base. That'll be routine there for Garcia. One gone. Here are the field conditions presented by Ace Hardware and the Scotts Company. It's a gorgeous night tonight here at Turner Field. 69 degrees as they count down the final days of this ballpark. Very pleasant evening here. I remember the last time we came here a few years back, it was right there. The heart of the summer, man, and it was smoking hot. It was so hot. Goodness gracious. It's good now. It's going to be in the mid 80s, I think, on Sunday. So it'll get a little bit uh, warm on Sunday, but that's all right. Daniel Norris standing in now with one out. Norris is one out of two career with a home run. Here's the 1 0. -oh. Well, Daniel's going to get a good fastball to hit right here. And we do know what Daniel has done already as a hitter. Norris looks at a strike on the outside edge. Two and one. You know, Brad talks a lot about the fact that he does not have Victor Martinez in these final three games because we're playing in a National League park. But one thing he really hasn't said, he really doesn't want his pitchers hitting and running the bases in this three-game series either. He just doesn't. No, I agree. And, and you know, earlier today, uh, Tigers pitchers were taking batting practice, and I was watching Verlander take BP in the cage, and I'm thinking, man, I'm not sure I want him doing that this time. No, of the you year. don't. You just don't. So baseball might look at this next year, and they might, if they do have to have interleague play the final weekend of the series, they'll play it in an American League ballpark. Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably the way it should be. Norris had a healthy cut there and the count goes three and two there's JV who uh, was walking around the clubhouse today holding a bat and he would not let go of it he just wants to hit you know, no matter when Verlander just wants to compete 
Norris pops it up foul back out of play. Well, this is why they're watching Norris, because you never know what you're going to get out of young Daniel. This is what he did last August in Chicago against a left-hander. Straight central. <laughs> a left-hander named John Lester, too. <laughs> Not just any left-hander. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a great athlete Norris is. And he'll take a walk. It's a base on balls with one out. Yes, sir, says Matt Boyd. Nice job. Bring up the top of the order now, Ian Kinsler. Kinsler's home run in the first inning was his 40th career leadoff home run. 40 of them now in his career. It's such a unique weapon to have a guy at the top of that lineup that can get you a quick 1 0 lead, and he's done that quite a bit. It was his 28th home run of the year. He's such a case study, Ron, and a guy that you can hit for power. He's he's proof perfect that you can hit for power without taking a huge swing, without a big, huge leg kick. He's got great balance. I mean, he gets that front foot up and down. He very seldom is off balance, even on breaking balls. And Ian looks for balls on the inner third of home plate, but he also has the ability to drive those balls the opposite way. But if you make a mistake inside, he's looking in there. He hit it out in the ballpark like he's done so many times this year. The majority of Ian's home runs this year have gone to left field. It'll bounce in and away. Norris thought about it. He put the brakes on and headed back to first base. Let's take a look at Kinsler's first home run here tonight in the first inning. Look at Kinsler climb the ladder and get this fastball. One of the keys for Kinsler, look at his shoulders. Every now and then he'll really, really drop that back shoulder, but he didn't drop it that time. I mean, he took a direct route to that baseball. He got his hands in front of his body, and he barreled that fastball up nicely there thrown from Whistler. It's an outstanding look right there. Now the 2-1. Two, two balls and two strikes on Ian. Here's where uh, yeah, Whistler likes to go to his breaking ball. Two strikes on a right-handed batter. He loves the slider. Meanwhile on deck is Cameron Maben. They're playing behind the runner at first base Norris not expecting him to run. Here's the 2 2 swing and a miss. He tried to hold up. Kinsler is out of there. Two gone. And yeah, there's that slide piece. And if you're Ian you know it was coming. Yeah, but it's a very difficult pitch to lay off of. And he disguises it very nicely like it's a fastball to the last uh, possible second. You'll see a few more right-handed batters to take swings at the Whistler slider here like that tonight. Here is Cameron Maben. Played right here in Atlanta last year and really had himself a, a pretty good season. Stole 23 bases, hit 10 homers. It's one of the reasons why the Tigers you know, really wanted Cameron Maben in the offseason. And obviously they were able to acquire him yeah. from the way he played last year down the stretch here and also defensively covering a lot of ground. He was a good defender last year. Meanwhile Boston on top of Toronto. That's good news. Bottom of the first inning at Fenway. Let's go Boston. Got Ricky Porcello tonight right. Yes. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2 on Maven. Whistler trying to settle in after getting rocked in the first inning for three runs. Two homers. They even traded for Ian Kroll. He went the other way, now pitching out of the Braves bullpen. And pitching very well these yeah. days. It's worked out well for both sides. Cameron came in batting 322, 43 RBIs, had a big home stand, was 10 for 27. And the one two. It'll bounce in two and two. Norris walking here in the second. He's there now with two outs. Tigers got three runs on four hits in that first inning before the crowd here could even settle in.
Here's the 2 2. Bouncing ball left side, a short hop pick there by Garcia. Maven is out. And so are the Tigers. No runs, a walk, one man left. Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica and get power you can depend on at Ram Power Days. Back here in Atlanta where the Tigers started this with a bang tonight. They scored three in the first inning out to a big early lead. And now Daniel Norris will go back to work here in the second. It'll be Kemp, Marquecas, and Flowers to face him. Norris was really good in the first. He threw only 13 pitches and struck out two. But now here is Matt Kemp, who's having himself a year. A monster September for Matt Kemp as well, hitting 340. And since they acquired him on July 30th, their team is totally different from an offensive standpoint. One guy can make that big a difference. That ball hammered to the air to deep center field. Maven going back to the track to the wall to make the catch. And Kemp nearly hit it out, one gone. By the way, stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game. We'll select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites now being served all day. Well, we already have a couple of home runs in this game. Yeah, yeah, we do. Who do you want to take? I'll take Daniel. Ooh, good choice. I'll take Daniel today. Uh, I will go with Cabrera. Go ahead, man. Might as well. Got a two -run I left him out there. I know you did. Well, the truck wants Kinsler. <laughs> Imagine That's not that. surprising. <laughs> I don't hate him, though. The folks in the truck smart, <laughs> man. One strike. Uh, Nick Markick is the former Oriole. He's having a good year, too. Had a 271, and quietly, Markick is has driven in 88 runs. I always admired his game when he played for the Baltimore Warriors. He was just. A really good baseball player that could do a lot of things right on the baseball field. Yeah, me too. In fact, every opening day you could count on Marquecas in right field for the Orioles. Just swing and a miss. That's the pitch we talked about Daniel would need tonight against some of these left handers that have decent numbers against left handed pitching. Look at this slide piece. Soft front side. He got out on front, and that ball really got down to the bottom of the zone. Foul back. We talked about the numbers for Marquez. His 88 run driven in this year. He is healthy really uh, for the first time a little bit because he had neck surgery prior to the 2015 season. Home run numbers way down last year. He had only three. But he is known as a guy that plays a really good right field, good throwing arm. There's a ball outside. 96 with that last fastball there unleashed. 
by Norris. Daniel has retired the first four in this game. Low and in. Three balls, two strikes on Marquecas. MGM Grand Detroit brings you the scouting report on Daniel Norris. And as you can see, Rod, his fastball velocity has gone up in September. Yeah, absolutely. He's already thrown one at 96 here today and several fastballs at 95. Popped up left side of the infield for Iglesias. And there are two gone. Five in a row retired by the Tigers lefty. You couldn't have asked uh, for anything more out of a young starting pitcher pitching in the biggest game of his career to come out here and to retire five in a, in a row throwing nothing but strikes. You know I'm trying to find a way to describe Fulmer Boyd and Norris and I guess the one word that comes to mind Rod for me at least is poise considering how they have pitched down the strike. I'd agree with that man. They've got ice water in their veins for young guys to do what they have done down the stretch really all year in the Tigers rotation has been amazing. Many managers in the position that Brad Ausmus is in would kind of hold their breath knowing that you know Zim has been on the DL and Sanchez hasn't had a good year and Pelfrey hasn't had a good year and when you throw three young starters out there you really hold your breath right. But they've all really produced. There's a slicing line drive to right base hit. I ran into a Matthew Boyd in the Tigers clubhouse today and I was asking him was he in the bullpen. Of course he's not going to start this weekend and he's had an outstanding year. And I told him man keep your head up. Man. You've had a great year. You've had a fabulous year. It doesn't matter that you're not getting the ball the final weekend of the series. Go down there do whatever you need to do and you'll be just fine. Yeah and I would not let that last start bother me at all if I'm Matthew that's games. exactly what I told him. I said, forget about that. Move on from that. You've done too many good things this year. Here is Dansby Swanson, number four overall prospect, according to MLB.com. Just a couple of years ago, he was the number one player chosen in the June draft. Didn't take him long to get to the movies either, did it? Not at all. And he has. A really good big league name, doesn't he? He does. Dansby Swanson. Talking to the Braves people here and even the Arizona people, they will tell you that Dansby will not wow you with any of his baseball skills as far as his speed, his running, his power, his arm, or his defense. But he does everything well. And he's got great baseball instincts. He's the guy that you can win with. Swanson looks at a strike in the outer edge 0 and 2. I found that to be awfully strange though Mario because when you draft somebody number yeah. one player in the country usually that guy does something really well whether he has a blazing fastball that gets up to 98 miles an hour or really true power guys like Chris Bryant Bryce Harper. Yeah they do something that is off the charts. It'll bounce in McCann nice block. I noticed the face guard on Swanson. He is wearing that because he was hit last year in the face when he was with the Diamondbacks in the minor leagues, and therefore uh, going forward now, he's had that face guard to cover the left side of his face. Vanderbilt University. He was a finalist for the Golden Spikes Award. No one ended up winning that award. Who won it? We saw him this year, Benintendi of oh, Boston. Yeah, Benintendi, good player. Two and two, the count on Dansby Swanson. Going to have some good crowds this weekend, and I think that kind of plays into the favor uh, of the Tigers. Usually, when you go somewhere into the year and the team's lost 92, and there's not many people in the seats, but there will be some energy in this ballpark this weekend. Slice to center field that'll get down a base hit. And so the Braves now have something going here with two outs. A pair of singles Flowers and Swanson. And it's a pretty good swing here by Swanson. Who has really hit well since coming to the big leagues this year. Nice short quick compact swing by the rookie.
Here's where it becomes a little bit more interesting in National League parks. You've got the number eight hitter now in Castro. You've got a man in scoring position. The pitcher spot next, so Norris can afford to be very careful here. Although Castro batting just 206. That's a great point, but although the Tigers have a three run lead, if I was Daniel, I would go after, go after him. him. I'd go after him, and then I'd have that pitcher leading off next half inning, especially with a three run lead. But your point is well taken. Where Iglesias is hitting today, eighth in the Tigers lineup, and where Castro is hitting for the Atlanta Braves, by far the toughest spot to hit in the National League. And the other thing is that Castro, as you mentioned, bats only 206. No homers this year. And time call now as Castro steps out. And it looks like the Orioles have gone on top of the Yankees 2-0 that game in the bottom of the fourth. Keep you updated on those games. There's a strike call. That one in the Boston Toronto game as well. Daniel now at 30. Yeah, pretty nice ratio. And 20 have hit the strike zone. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Little number foul down the third base line. One ball and two strikes. Well, Norris in his last start against the Royals, five and two thirds, allowing two earned runs. I mean, this is a guy now that has made every start in the big leagues without allowing more than three earned runs in any starts. So, Eighteen of those starts. Pretty amazing stretch he is on, and it speaks to his skill level. It also speaks to why he was one of the main components of the David Price deal last year. Bouncing ball right side right at Miggy. They'll win the race to the bag and the side retired. No runs, two hits, two men left. Two in the books in Atlanta. We know that it was falling in the Motor City the last two days and apparently today as well. How about that? That field took five inches of rain the last couple of days, Comerica Park. Yeah, we were talking to Brad before the ball game today when they went out and looked at it yesterday. I mean, you could just see the water coming up through the grass. So it was going to be tough to get the ball game in yesterday, and uh, obviously they couldn't. Here is Cabrera to get things rolling here in the third. Tigers up three. And a wave and a miss on one. And Miguel took the first pitch that he saw today from Matt Whistler and hit it over the 
four hundred foot sign for a home run two run shot his thirty seventh of the season over one hundred RBI again for Miguel. The Braves people asked me a question today they say why is Miguel Cabrera not in the MVP conversation in the American League. Great and I question. said you know what I said because he has set the bar so high that a lot of times people don't give him the credit that he deserves. Well I would agree with that and you know I, I think that unless Mickey gets to like 40 RBI's and 120 or 40 home runs 120 RBI's they kind of ignore him. Yeah his numbers are over 300. He's got 37 jacks. He's driven in 100 again. S slugging percentage is way up again. Uh oh. Oh man he put a beating on that one as well to dead center field. It's going to go. Second home run of the ball game for Miguel Cabrera and his 4 nothing Tigers. Oh you Beast. He's an absolute beast. Number 38 for Miggy. Maybe we ought to put him in the MVP conversation. He's in. He's got to be in. Oh my goodness. Both of his homers clubbed to center field, and both of them no doubters. These Tiger fans, listen to him. They there are a Miggy. lot of them here. I mean, he's one of those guys, man. If you're the Braves and even his teammates and a lot of his peers, when he does some things on the baseball field, your jaw just drops. That ball hit well to center field, playable though, and fielded by Enciarte on the run, one gone. But it's a shame though regarding McGill, and we're going to see this home run again. Now this one is right down the middle in the outside part of the plate, but look at the swing by McGill. He leads with the front arm. And take a look at the balance. Freezing on contact. Look at the balance through the strike zone. I mean, you could draw a line right down the center of Miguel Cabrera's body. And that illustrates outstanding balance throughout the swing. Special, special player. You see the look on Whistler's face? Once contact was made, he knew it. He just looked down and thought, man, he got me again. Six times he's gone a multi homer game this year. And 39 times in his career he's hit more than one in a game. Hall of Fame. He will go down as one of the best right handed hitters to ever play Major League Baseball. One of the best and he'll be in the top five. Justin Upton had a double to right field but did not score in the first. That was a pretty swing by Justin Upton for those of you that weren't with us. I mean he laced one right down the right field line. That'll miss inside. Upton himself, and I know Cabrera's been great, and obviously great here tonight, but Upton himself has carried the team at times this year, in the month of September, and even in August. Swing and a miss. And if you think about Miggy right now, Mario, he's hitting home runs, but he's also playing with that gimpy left knee after he took that ball off the left knee a couple of days ago when Justin Verlander threw over to first base and caught him in a bad spot. Yeah, we saw Doug Teeter taking a look at him. And so you see the ranks for Upton. Way up and in. That'll be ball four. And Justin is aboard. And right now we check in with John Keating. Mario, maybe we should have had an idea that it was going to be a good night for the Tigers, and at least is starting that way because it's a very loose clubhouse. Earlier today we were in there and Justin Verlander said to me, hey John, reach in there and see if there's a Red Bull in the cooler, would you? And so I did because I always do what Justin Verlander suggests. You open it up and inside was a, swear to God, a spring-loaded artificial snake. So he got me and everybody chuckled. And then he got Michael Fulmer and then he also got one Roderick Allen as well. Oh, really? They were keeping track of all of those <laughs> of us who were who were gotten. Jose Iglesias got me. I should have known when he asked me, are there any Red Bull in there? How do I know that there's any Red Bull in there? And the idiot like me I went over there and opened it up. See, you guys, man, I would have never fallen for that. I don't oh, know what's man. the matter with you guys. <laughs> That's how loose the clubhouse was. That's a great point, John. I said to Justin, "Is was this your brainchild?" And he said, "I don't know what you're talking about." And I said, "That's great acting, JV. You might have the best acting today of anybody in your relationship right now." Oh, nice! <laughs> you did not just do that. 
Yeah, he did. <laughs> Here is McCann now with two men on. Single for Castellanos. There's a foul straight back of the screen. Every single fastball that Matt Whistler has thrown up to the plate tonight, the Tigers have gotten an outstanding swing at it. They have not missed many of them. Well, the Tigers now have a total of six hits. They got a homer and a single and a walk in this inning as Whistler finds himself in trouble once again. A high fly ball to left. It'll be playable for Kemp. Runners will tag and hold as Kemp fires it back in. Two gone. Here's how good this Tigers offense has been. Uh, Whistler came into this game allowing just one home run in his last 30 innings. Mm -hmm. And he's given up, what, three tonight? Curly Fries. Curly Fries is right. I forgot about that. Weber, the right hander, beginning to tune up now early in this game. You want to get into the front end of this bullpen that uh, the Atlanta Braves have because the back end of their bullpen right now is pitching some tremendous baseball. You don't want to be losing to the Braves right now in the seventh inning. That's how good their bullpen has been at the back end. Iglesias looks at a strike on one. One of the reasons why Mario I still enjoy uh, interleague play. I mean I don't necessarily like it at the end of the year but it's special and to get a chance to come to the ballpark and see a guy like Freddie Freeman and you know they love the fact that they can see a Miguel Cabrera as well the Atlanta Braves fans. Well they've seen plenty of them tonight to be sure. Miguel Cabrera hit a two run shot in the first inning to give the Tigers a three to nothing lead. And follow that up with a solo shot here in the third. All Tigers so far in this one. As we keep an eye on the other games of interest and importance to the Tigers, Orioles now lead Baltimore or uh, New York rather two to one. Orioles had a two nothing lead. The Yanks had come back with a run, and Toronto, Boston still one nothing. Red Sox, top three later on. Oakland, Seattle don't count Seattle out yet. They are still right there, but certainly not in the driver's seat. Miguel Cabrera trying to put the Tigers in the driver's seat with a two homer game. And Daniel Norris has enjoyed a four run outburst early on in this one for the Tigers. Matt Whistler leads it off the Braves pitcher. It'll be Whistler. Then in Ciarte and Garcia. Whistler a 133 batting average this year.
Here's a ground ball base hit to right. He went the other way and singles to lead off the third. He tickets for a potential wild card in American League Division Series games at Comerica Park are on sale right now. Tickets sold exclusively at Tigers.com. So log on, check it out online, get your Tigers postseason tickets. Tigers trying to do their part to get there. They scored three in the first and one in the third. Here is Inciarte. Ball one. Inciarte returned to the leadoff slot for the Braves in the early part of August, August 5th, and since then batting. 341 from the leadoff slot. Got the benefit of the call there, did Norris. And Ciarte disagreed. And DJ DJ Rayburn is the home plate umpire tonight. Norris will take it. A little bit outside, too far outside that time. Two balls, one strike. Daniel Norris, a 3 1 3 ERA in his four September starts. Really, a last September he pitched well, also had an ERA sub two last September when he just joined the ball club. Swing and a miss. Outstanding breaking ball. Took a little bit off of that one and really had Inciarte fooled it out in front. Well, the Orioles now up three to one on the Yankees. That's in the top of the fifth. And Johnny Kane shortly will show us how. Here's the 2 2. Slap foul back out of play. How about the Orioles, man? Going to Toronto, winning two out of three there. Really? And then the one they won the other day. I mean, yeah, the night that they run, run yeah. Kid Kim, who just really hasn't done a whole lot this year, came up with the biggest hit of their season. Two balls, two strikes. On in Ciarte. Fouled away again. Well, by virtue of going into Rogers Center and taking two out of three, the Orioles move their their ball club into a tie now with Toronto for the wild card. Tigers game and a half out Seattle two back the question now for the Tigers moving forward here is will they play Monday against Cleveland in the makeup game. Soft line drive caught by the shortstop Iglesias. Iglesias has played an outstanding shortstop this year. His fielding percentage is 9-9-1, so he's been stellar on the defensive end. And just takes one step, elevates, and takes a base hit away from Inciarte. Are you surprised at how well Iglesias has played shortstop this year? Not really. I don't think so, Ryan. I was talking to Omar Vizquel a little bit earlier this year, about midway through the season, and we've all known that uh, that Iglesias has the talent. The one thing that Omar tried to get him to do is tone it down a little bit, not mm -hmm. try and make everything so fancy. Right, right. And uh, I think Iglesias has kind of taken that to heart. Now there is a certain flair to his game, and you don't want to take it all away, but mm -hmm. there are certain basics that you need to do. And I think Omar has done a great job of, of keying in on. Those. I've noticed that too on the routine plays, not as flashy. I mean, he's going to make those acrobatic plays because he's just that kind of athlete at the shortstop position. But the routine plays. He is very much under control and tries to get in front of everything. Ian Kinsler has really helped him to start to mature as a really good big league shortstop. And we had a couple of shots on the last homestand of Kinsler and Iglesias sitting on the bench talking to each other about defense, it appeared. I saw that. And so uh, you could tell with Omar, of course, uh, one of the great all time defenders. Yeah, he'll go into the Hall of Fame when his time uh, comes. That would be Omar Vizcale, in my opinion. Again, the 0-2, and it's in the air. 
Back is short. That's Iglesias cruising back for the out. Garcia gone two away. Let's take a look at the pitch by pitch here. The first time that Norris went up against one of the hottest hitters in all of baseball right now. He's had a 30 game hitting streak snap. He gets ahead of him with that first pitch fastball, then throws an outstanding breaking ball. Fastball up, and then he dusted with another 95 mile per hour fastball. Now, that was a special pitch sequence there to Freddie Freeman. So, Freeman batting with two outs now. Not only that hitting streak coming to an end, but also a 46 game on base streak. It came to an end. Mm, do it, Danny. Norris getting again the benefit of the call from DJ Rayburn. When he's soft on that front side, it allows his arm to catch up and it allows him to release that breaking ball out in front. And that allows it to tumble into the strike zone very nicely at 78 miles an hour. Here are the Chevy Silverado most dependable players. When you look at this Braves lineup, here's why they've won a lot of games in the second half, right? especially down the stretch. They've got some guys in the middle of their lineup and even in Ciarte at the top that have really gotten it done. Well, it all started when Matt Kemp came on the scene. And you see what Kemp's numbers are, 340 with eight home runs. But Freddie Freeman just went off in the last 40 games. You talked about Ciarte, their leadoff hitter, and Dansby Swanson. When they called him up about 30 days ago, this guy, all he has done is hit and he's going to be their shortstop for the next decade. And last pitch, uh, Daniel overthrew. If he decides to throw Freeman another breaking ball right here, he needs to make sure he gets it away from Freeman because Freeman's already seen a couple of those breaking balls. And if he just happens to hang it on the inside part of the plate, Freeman's going to get a good hit, at, good swing at. Here comes the breaking ball. Two balls and two strikes. They play Freeman with the severe shift to the right side. But they pitch him away. But they exactly, but they pitch him away. Yeah. They did that to him first time up too. Matt Kemp waiting on deck. And Freeman again takes one outside and now the count fills three and two. Well you want something to happen here with Freeman. You do not want a couple of men on base with Matt Kemp standing in the on deck circle. He can get three back in a hurry. That's the kind of year you know, that Matt Kemp is having. Runner will go on 3 2 and a ball high. That'll put two men aboard now. A walk for Freddie Freeman. And now the Orioles, well, Johnny Kane's working overtime to call Sam tonight. It is 5 1 now for Baltimore and New York. So Rich Duby making some notations on his card. Well, here is Kemp now with two men on. His fly ball sent the center fielder Maven deep to right center his first time up. And Kemp has already driven in 107 runs this year. The majority of those with the San Diego Padres. They say that Matt Kemp is just happy in Atlanta. Of course he played in Los Angeles. He had some success in Los Angeles but didn't end all that favorably for Matt Kemp. He was traded to the San Diego Padres, played there for a couple of seasons, and but now he's playing a little closer to home. And he's from Oklahoma City. Norris with the 0-1. I saw your pregame hit on that. <laughs> you like that? And I couldn't help but to chuckle at the Rihanna reference. <laughs> I had to. Do. And if that had or did not have anything to do with his slide in Los Angeles. He had a couple of nice summers out there. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, had a couple of nice summers out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. 0-2. Oh, Norris trying to get this final out here. Strand a couple of runners in the third. Drive in the air to right center field. Ball is hit well. Martinez 
going back to make the catch at the wall. Woo. That is the second deep fly ball that Kemp has hit, falling short twice in a deep breath for Daniel Norris as the Braves strand two. Nice running play here by JD. They had it all the way. All right, Johnny, thank you. One and a half is the spread right now. Tigers trailing both Baltimore and Toronto. We'll keep our eyes on that score as well as the Blue Jays and Boston tonight at Fenway. As Daniel Norris leads it off. A lot of trouble with 47 homers now, Rod. How much of that is a product of that ballpark, do you think? Some, but he hits a lot of homers on the road. One thing about Trumbo, man, he's always had true power. I mean, this guy was hitting 30 home runs when he was playing out on the West Coast, playing for the Angels, and the ball doesn't travel very well at night in California. So he's got true power. Park has helped a little bit, but it's not the total answer. Give Trumbo a lot of credit. Daniel Norris had a walk his first at bat. Now he's up 2-0 in this at bat. And he'll shoot one right to the second baseman. Castro a bullet. He's an athlete, man. His first at bat, man, he took some good swings. He is a competitor. This is an absolute seed. <laughs> oh. And it appeared to fool Castro or give him a little bit of trouble at least. Hard hit ball one gone here in the fourth here is Ian Kinsler. There has been a lot of hard hit balls tonight already. Ian through the first three frames against Matt Whistler. Ian started the game by nearly hitting two home runs in one at bat. The first one he hit just sailed foul to the left of the pole and then later in the at bat he hit it out. Kinsler one out of two. Tying Lou Whitaker for the Tigers record among second basemen for homers in a season with 28. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Sweet Lou had a sweet swing. He sure did, man. He played the game so cool, so calm and collected. He was very talented. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Bouncing ball slowly towards short on the charge. Swanson. Two gone. Nice play there by Dansby Swanson with a running scoop and now a chance here for Whistler to get a one two three inning. 
has not had one of those yet tonight. Here is Maven. Cameron one for two, single on the ground out. Showing bunt. As a matter of fact, uh, Lou Whitaker is going to be featured at uh, Fantasy Camp uh, in January this year. Really? Yeah, Jerry Lewis always tries to have some type of a theme. And last year it was Jim Leighton. Uh, the year before that it was Alan Trammell. And this year it's going to be Lou Whitaker. One ball and one strike. I'll bet he could still pick it and still teach you how to do it. And no question about that. He still looks like he's in great shape. He's at Comerica Park quite often. He spends quite a bit of time in Detroit. Swing and a miss. Maven. Now down to the count one and two. Ooh, somebody slowed down Baltimore. Oh, what's going on here? Jonathan Scope has homered. Three run shot. Well, all you can do is handle your own business. Agreed. Now the one two. And he missed outside again. He stayed away from Cameron this time. Maybe he stayed off and laid off. Uh, every pitch you know, so far that uh, Whistler has thrown to Maven has been away from him, and the majority of the pitches have been breaking balls. How about that bus ride from the airport to the hotel last night? It was fun, wasn't it? We, we got on the bus at night. It's about 11 o'clock. We're cruising through Atlanta, and it was just bumper to bumper traffic on the freeway. They say that this city uh, it has an issue with traffic. They say you cannot get anywhere. And I was talking to Justin Upton last night. And we were waiting for our bags. He said he lived about 10 minutes away from the ballpark, and it took him 30 minutes to get to work every day. Oh my goodness! Oh. Another foul by Maven. It's a nice job. A little 911 swing there by uh, Cam Maven. Emergency on a 94 mile power fastball. And Whistler will go back to that slider at some point in time. Probably on this pitch. Again the 2-2 two -two. and he missed three and two. I saw Cameron leaving the uh, hotel last night and and uh, he said you guys wait for your bags. I said yeah. He goes I'm getting out of here man. You guys are going to be here at least another hour waiting for those bags <laughs> and we were. He knew. He's waiting and waiting. He played here last year. He knew. He's got himself a pretty good bat here as he's battling Whistler. And Whistler is about to throw his 70th pitch. It's an eight pitch at bat to Maven. Little chopper to third base. Easy play there for Garcia. And it's going to be a one, two, three for Whistler.
by Rod a little bit a uh, while ago and the second half surge now for the Braves. And batting average way up, runs per game, home runs, you name it, OPS way up. And we also talked about the fact it coincided uh, when they were able to acquire Matt Kent. Well, the Tigers have a lead here. It is 4 0 as we go to the bottom of the fourth at Turner Field, and it's going to be Nick Markakis to lead it off for the Braves. Be Markakis and then Flowers and Swanson. And so far, Daniel Norris has done a nice job. Fastball's gotten all the way up to 96. The majority of his fastballs have been 94, 95. He's thrown some really good, I mean, really good breaking balls. Hasn't really thrown that many change-ups. Starting to really see why you know, the Tigers really wanted Daniel Norris in that deal last year for David Price. They could have gotten themselves a lot of really good prospects from a lot of teams out there that were coveting uh, David Price. Swing and a miss, and Markakis is out. But Alex Anthopoulos, who was the general manager of the Toronto Blue Jays at that time, uh, he told Dave Dombrowski, if you're going to move David Price, you can have anybody in our minor league system to start the deal. And when it was all said and done, Daniel Norris was the guy they chose to start the deal for David Price. That's where the uh, general managers at that time of the year really lean on their scouting departments to give them recommendations. And of course, Daniel Norris came highly recommended. There's a ground ball to short. Iglesias to his left. Flowers is out, two gone. That's a nice pitch there by Norris. He hasn't thrown many changes, but after throwing so many fastballs tonight, he knew Flowers was looking for a fastball, so he pulled the string on him at about 88 miles an hour, just enough to get Flowers out in front to roll over to the shortstop for the ground out. You know, you really wonder, getting back to Norris, what his season would have been like had he not injured himself in spring training. He hurt his back during a workout right. down in Lakeland, and so he started the season on the DL, and I think going into spring camp, right, everybody agreed. He probably was a lot for the rotation. Especially the way that he threw the ball down the stretch when he came off the disabled list. He made a couple of starts last September that were just spectacular, and that had everybody excited about you know, what spring training would be like for Daniel. Here's the 0 1. Hey, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lights. Yeah, one of the things that Daniel has done a very nice job of today in his first pitch strikes. He is 12 of 16 in first pitch strikes. It'll bounce in one ball and two strikes. Well, obviously, uh, Norris has had to deal with some frustrations. We talked about the injuries. And every time he seems to get back from one injury, something else happened. He also strained his oblique early in July in a start against the Indians. And, of course, uh, the big thing that he had to deal with in the offseason was the thyroid cancer that he beat. Mm -hmm. And so there have been some obstacles for Daniel, but he has met and beaten every one of them. Two balls and two strikes. Great competitor. If you notice what Daniels does right before he gets ready to pitch the ball, take a look at what he does with his glove in his hand. He's kind of motioning to himself. He's telling himself, reminding himself to follow through, to pull that glove down. And he's done a real nice job of that today. I mean, just little subtle things like that that guys have to do to remind themselves of what they want to accomplish. And he's getting the ball down at the bottom of the zone today, Mario. It's almost like a hitter taking a practice swing. Exactly. I mean, he stands on the mound and he just kind of motions, just pull it down, pull it down, telling himself. Mm. He's gone 3 2 now on uh, Dansby Swanson. His third full count. Did you happen to catch any of that uh, documentary on him? Uh, that they did in the pregame show, just kind of talking about his offseason yesterday. Bits and pieces of it, and it looked absolutely spectacular. Man, it was well done. It really was shot well. And uh, if you didn't see it yesterday, man, you got to look online. It was outstanding. For those of you who want to know, he drove Shaggy, which is his 78 Volkswagen fan. Shaggy outside? <laughs> you didn't see Shaggy no, outside? outside. <laughs> Shaggy in the parking lot. <laughs> he drove it from Tennessee to Oregon this past offseason. 
<laughs> Shaggy. Every time he pitches, I, I tweet out a picture of Shaggy. <laughs> There's a two on walk for Swanson. Don't bring up Castro. I don't know how Shaggy would do, do it all this traffic out here stopping and starting. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Not real well. Suffice to say, 65 now for Norris. Castro bounced out three unassisted in his last at bat. Tigers lead four to nothing. They've hit three home runs in this game, two of them by the big guy, Miguel Cabrera. One ball, no strikes. Castro now in his seventh year in the system for the Atlanta Braves. Can play multiple infield positions, third, second, short. Drilled to center field, Maven on the move. Cameron runs it down, and that is that for Atlanta. No runs, a walk, one left. We go to the fifth. Moonshots presented by Magic Window. Miguel Cabrera is already homered twice in this contest. First two times up, he has taken Matt Whistler straight central. Two run shot his first time up, solo shot his second time up. Miguel Cabrera came to play tonight. Miguel Cabrera has seen four pitches tonight. He's hit two homers. And now he's up there for the third time. 38 homers, 108. In an OPS of 960, nearly 1,000. And he hasn't even been in the MVP conversation, but he's going to be for the next couple of days. Cabrera Martinez Upton here in the fifth inning at Turner Field. Whistler backs him out of there. You know, Mickey has hit three big flies in a game before. Are you calling another three homer game here? Well, if Whistler throws him a hanging breaking ball, he hit this one out to left. Here's the 1 0. Line to left, a base hit. Well, that was close. <laughs> I will give you half credit for that. <laughs> Gladly. I mean, you just cannot get him out. I mean, when he's seeing the ball as well as he's seeing the ball right now, he is just a really tough assignment. I mean, here's a little fastball tailing down and in that Miguel turns on. And the one thing about Miguel Mario, he is so smart. He knew the first couple of times he over to center field. So he knew Whistler was not going to give him anything away. He knew Whistler was going to try to come inside. And Miguel was waiting for him. He opened his hips up and turned on that fastball and hit it between third and short. J.D. Martinez is 0 for 2. Ground out, fly out. J. 
J.D. among the best in on base percentage this year. He came in sixth in the American League at 381. And we've said this many times, but not only do you have to consider the power part of J.D.'s game, but the fact that he's a 300 hitter as well. It's one of the things that Miggy told me about J.D. in spring training. He says J.D. can be a 300 hitter. All he needs to do is take what the pitcher gives him in certain situations. And what Miggy meant by that is that when there's a runner in scoring position, a lot of times they're not going to give J.D. things to hit. They're not going to give me pitches to hit. But what I do is I just take that base hit the opposite way. And he said once J.D. starts to do that, he says J.D. is going to be a 300 hitter. Well, Martinez was batting 400 in the month of uh, June before the injury struck in July. And since coming off the disabled list, really had not slowed down all that much. Worcester really can't get that breaking ball over the plate, and that's probably been most of his issues tonight. That's why he's been hit so hard. Swing and a miss. One gone. I want to take one more look at the Miggy swing, and I want to point out to you what he does with his hips here. He's anticipating the ball being inside. This is a sinker ball. It gets away on the inside part of the plate, but look at Miggy open up the hips because he's looking inside, so the hips start to open up, and then he's able to get that bat out in front of home plate and hit that ball to the pull field. One more look at it from the side. He knows Wister's not going to stay away because he's already hit two home runs to center field. Ball one to Justin Upton. Double and a walk tonight for Justin. Upton now at 85 RBIs this year. And the month of September has been awfully good. 11 homers this month alone. Yeah, no one has hit more big flies in the month of September than Justin Upton. No one's hit more. But he's not just hitting home runs. He's hit them a long way. Mm. And a lot of these have gone well over 400 feet. And with exit velocities, as far as the bat speed is concerned, with regularity at 110 miles an hour, which is unheard of. Watch this swing right here. 3-0. Throw him an off-speed pitch. And you take a look at uh, Austin's hot and cold zones here. This is since August 20th. 400 down and in 333 692 333 up top. He's covering all the zones in one part of area or another. Look at it. Man, he goes the other way with the base hit. And that's where his double was hit down the right field line. His first at bat. So a couple of opposite field hits. Check in now with John Keating. It's a homecoming for Justin Upton, who spent a couple of years here in Atlanta. Last year, he was a member of the San Diego Padres, and one of his teammates then was Matt Kemp. I had the opportunity to talk to Kemp about Upton and their relationship. He kind of smiled and said, we we're only together for a year, but I consider him my best friend. In fact, they came to the ballpark together today. Guys. Well, there's Kemp, and uh, of course he, uh, as you mentioned, Rod, is feeling a whole lot more comfortable here in Atlanta, and uh, those friendships are, you know, once you make them in baseball, it doesn't matter what colors you wear the rest of your careers, they're I've, always there. I've known Matt Kemp for a long, long time. I mean, he used to work out in Arizona, and I used to see him quite frequently out there. He lived out there for a couple of winters, and uh, he worked very hard in the winter. But one of the things that Matt Kemp said, he's got to get himself in better shape. He told his people when he came over, he says, I'd like to get in better shape this year. So he's been working hard here. Meanwhile, Roger McDowell, the pitching coach, out to have a chat with Whistler. The uh, Tigers have another threat going here. Whistler had a one, two, three, fourth, but now two on, one out here in the fifth. Nick Castellanos. Yeah. One strike on Castellanos. I thought it was pretty funny last night getting on the team flight. You were talking about Nick. Nick came on bouncing out of the plane. You like, said, look at you, man. <laughs> Walk a little extra hop in your step these days. Yeah, he's back on a big league plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He's just got to be thrilled to be able to get back in the lineup. Because down the stretch, you know, there was a time we weren't sure he was going to be able to play the final week. Especially after he did that one simulated game against Jordan Zimmerman the first time Zimmerman did one. And Nick took about three swings and shut it down. In the air to right field, shallow slicing. Here comes Marcakis. He'll get there. Two gone. And again, a reminder tickets for potential wild card in the American League Division Series games at Comerica are on sale right now. Tickets sold exclusively at Tigers.com. Here is James McCann with two outs. Mack over two, pop up, and a fly ball. Tigers have four runs, eight hits, and Atlanta tonight, no runs on three hits. And last time uh, James was up, he got a breaking ball from Whistler. Whistler had him out on that front foot, he popped it up. Whistler surrendered a couple of home runs in the first, one in the third, and again, there is activity in the bullpen. De La Cruz, the right hander, beginning to heat up now for Atlanta. Atlanta has some hard throwers in their bullpen. I mean, they've got about four or five, six guys, all 95 and above, and they've got one guy that throws over 100. Here's the 0 1. Pulled to the left side of the infield and threw. It's a base hit. This is going to get a run in. It's going to be a two out RBI single for McCann, and the Tigers have added to the lead. It's now 5 to nothing. Cabrera scores his third run of the night. It's a nice job here by James McCann getting something he can handle and turning on it, hitting it between the shortstop and the third baseman, and also a really good base running by Miguel Cabrera. That's a breaking ball that he got out in front of, and Miguel running very well. And it doesn't look like anything's wrong with that left knee right now. So give McCann an RBI, and that's going to be the end for Whistler. De La Cruz will be coming out of the bullpen. Whistler departs after four and two thirds. Wall signed windows pitching change. We'll be back to Atlanta. America Bank game summary so far all Tigers in this one in the first inning Ian Kinsler led off the game with a big fly his 27th of the year Miguel Cabrera also hit a two run shot in the fourth inning, and then Miguel was at it again in the third inning two home runs for Miguel Cabrera straight away center field tonight against the starter Matt Whistler who has now departed.
He'll give way to the right-hander, Joel De La Cruz. And De La Cruz has got a pretty good arm. And fastball gets up to 92, 93, throws lots of sliders, and also has a good changeup, loves his changeup. Iglesias will face him. The Tigers have another run. They have two men on, two men out. Here he has singled by McCann, giving the Tigers a 5 0 lead. And here's one situation where if you're the number eight hitter, you're probably going to get something to hit. Two outs, a couple of runners aboard. Yeah. High strike given to De La Cruz. One games for their triple A team in Gwinnett at an ERA of about four and a half. That'll slide inside and miss the count now goes to two and one. A couple of ground balls for Iglesias. Meanwhile, it looks like Miguel is still uh, talking about that right knee that he took that uh, errant pickoff throw on a couple of days ago. It's Kevin Rand there, the head athletic trainer with him. Sore knee or not. It doesn't seem to matter tonight, does it? It really doesn't matter at all. I think he does have a, a high tolerance for pain. I mean, he can play in pain. We've seen him do it. Over and over. And play at an exceedingly high level. In the air down the right field line. Foul ground. Tough play. Ooh, and a diving attempt there by Freeman on the tarp. Couldn't quite get it though. He's a pretty good defender. He's a big guy. Freeman about six feet five inches, 220 pounds. This is the last thing you want to see <laughs> one of your players doing, especially Freeman. I don't think I ever want to see that if I'm a manager or a GM or an owner. Two and two. Flowers down to block it. Three balls, two strikes on Iglesias. Outfielders are playing very shallow. And with Iglesias uh, standing in the batter's box, and uh, which means Justin Upton's going to have to get a real good jump. Something going on with the home plate umpire? Something's going on because the umpiring crew started to converge on DJ Raber, who may have taken some air and dirt in the eye. Yeah, and the trainer and for the Atlanta Braves was headed out of the dugout as well, and DJ Raber. And told them all to go back. And Justin has to get a good secondary lead out at second just in case Iglesias gets a base hit. Right through the catcher to the backstop. It'll be ball four. That's going to put Iglesias at first and load the bases. So Daniel Norris will check in and we'll get a score update now from Fenway Toronto has tied that game 1 1 top of the fifth inning. So Tigers fans really don't care they just need one of those two teams to lose tonight right. That would be good. That would be a good start and uh, we mentioned Baltimore was leading big 8 1 in New York. Could use some help from the Boston Red Sox. Norris in his last at bat hit a line drive right to the second baseman. He's also walked tonight. If he gets another fastball here from Dela Cruz, he's going to hit it hard somewhere. He's got that kind of swing. He looks good in the batter's box. In there for a strike. By the way, I am not taking responsibility for this, but uh, Jose Bautista is now homer to make it three to one to Ronald. Mm. Just as we talk about Boston helping us out, long way to go in that game, though, especially in that ballpark. Now De La Cruz with the one one.
How about Norris, man? He's become a tough out. It's just been amazing. He's had a handful of big league at bats. He's had himself in a really nice, friendly fastball count all night long. Here's the 2 1. Rounded foul, 2 and 2. And a nice little sink piece there thrown by De La Cruz. The way Norris handles the bat is just one reason why we think he's a, a great athlete. But Rod, remember that first start he made as a Tiger in Baltimore last year? He made that diving play on a bunt that was uh, a ball that was butted right at him. I do remember that. And he, he just kind of stretched out and made a diving play. And immediately you thought, man, this guy A is a competitor and B is a really good athlete. He made a nice athletic play. And off of their leadoff hitter in Ciarte to, to lead off the game, taking a feed from Miguel Cabrera, beating in Ciarte to the bag at first on a grounder. That is low for ball three, and now no place to put Norris three and two. Well, that's not good. De La Cruz getting a visit now from Garcia, his third baseman, to try and settle him down a bit. He's got to throw a strike here. Three and two on Daniel Norris. Bouncing ball right side. And right there is Castro to throw him out. Norris hustling down the line. Tile set for a run. McCann with an RBI single. And you're watching Tigers baseball presented by Belt Tire. Johnny Kane, one and a half. Tigers trailing both Baltimore and Toronto. We'll see what transpires the rest of the night. Tigers doing their part in this game as they lead by a score of five to nothing. Thanks to that guy right there for the most part. Miguel Cabrera has three hits, including two homers. And we will go to the bottom of the fifth inning here. Daniel Norris goes back to the hill. We've got a pinch hitter. Chase Darno is the batter now. Ciarte then Garcia to follow. Darno batting 246. Okay. 
Tigers with five runs on nine hits in this game only three hits for the Braves there's a ball low to Darnell who apparently Ron is a budding musician he has the Chase Darnell band he does that he stars in don't ask him what type of music I don't know it's always nice if you can do something uh, when you're away from the field to occupy your mind these guys have so much free time several types of players I mean they'd be carrying around guitars and stuff. Alex Wilson the Tigers uh, relief pitcher actually carries around a banjo. Mm. He is learning that instrument. Two balls and no strikes. Uh, Darno he'll be followed by Inciarte and Garcia and there's a ball outside three and Mario Chase Darno is a very engaging guy his CD he tells me actually came out today it's called Seven Ghosts and he is warmed up on a uh, bill with Lady Antebellum he's actually played here at the, the ballpark he goes and tells the story in great detail about the one day that he decided he wanted to become a musician as parallel to his baseball career really see we can count on Keats man to dig that stuff up I had no idea what kind of music well, he's all over it. Jonathan you it's know called that. Americana music he uh, he describes it as yeah Americana a little country a little pop oh, yeah. okay Keats you play any instruments did not <laughs> tried tried a handful of times <laughs> what did you try <laughs> gave it up I always tried the guitar for a bit that is whistled foul down the left field line. I tried it for a bit too. Approximately a day is all I gave myself, yeah. and I couldn't get it. I played the French horn a little bit, man, but I used to really? hate carrying oh, I that paid, big old I'd pay hard earned money to see that. That thing was big, man. I hated carrying that thing. My son plays the tuba, so don't complain to me about <laughs> the French horn. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, man. Three and two. Bouncing ball up the middle, Iglesias. Nice play. Stutters. Three. Got it. Ooh, Iglesias. Iggy, another nice play. He's got such great feet. And I asked Iggy one time, I mean, what are you thinking about on ground balls? He says, I try to field every ground ball with my feet. Even if I can't get in front of it, I'm thinking about trying to get in front of it. He almost lost his balance. Somehow he stayed on his feet. He did a 360 and threw a strike to Miguel Cabrera. He's a special talent at shortstop. You know what he has? He has great bounce. When he starts to stumble or goes to the ground, makes a diving play, he bounces to his feet very quickly. 991 fielding percentage right now for Jose, and that would be the best in Tigers history among shortstops. Putting on a show again here tonight. Here is Ender and Ziarte. Ball one. Norris has surrendered only three hits in this game. Two of them were singles in the second. And a base hit to lead off the third. That's it. Strike on the outer edge. 1 1. It really has been amazing how the Tigers continue to get solid starting pitching from the youngsters in their rotation. And these guys all know. Norris Boyd Fulmer they've got a shot here to become the future of the Tigers rotation the core of the Tigers rotation they sure do here's our high speed pitch and it is brought to you by Xfinity and Norris is top fastball today 96 miles an hour he's gone as low as 75 with that really good curveball tonight now they understand that Justin Verlander is the ace of the staff and of course Jordan Zimmerman when healthy is a tremendous big league pitcher. But Norris was telling me a while ago in Seattle actually on a, a recent road trip that these guys talk about it a lot you know we have a chance here to to do something special as a group and I think they kind of hang together and uh, they kind of feed off each other. It's great to see one thing they all do know. They know they all can pitch in the big leagues because they've all done it and they've all pitched in some meaningful games down the stretch this season. And there's Matthew Boyd. And of course, Michael Fulmer. And he will pitch on Monday if that game is needed at Comerica Park. Fulmer needs what three innings to qualify for the lead and yes. earn run average. Just three innings to qualify. 
Bouncing ball to third. Castellanos gobbles it up. And Ciarte is out of there, two gone. And let's go back to John Keating. It's a tradition, Mario. Late in every baseball season, the rookies find that their clothes have been taken from them, and some other articles of clothing are there for them to wear as they're heading to the airport to get on a plane. And usually there's a theme. Not so much this year. You had a little bit of everything. You had a cop, you had a wrestler, you had a ballerina, you had a Muppet. The, the one theme I think there is is that there was way, way too much skin shown. Yeah, you got that right, John. Oh, that ball hit right back up the middle and off of Norris, and there will be no play. It'll be an infield hit. Where to get him at? No, but it carried straight up. It didn't appear to be uh, worse for the wear. We'll take one look at it, then we'll get back to those uh, costumes. Glove. Yeah, looked like it was off the glove. He almost made a great play. <laughs> Kevin Rand making sure that that hand is all right. Norris is smiling, so I, I assume he just wants to get get on with this. It'll be an infield hit for Garcia. And Norris is all right. He'll stay in the game. Yeah, what uh, Keats was talking about. That's always one of the uh, fun times of year when we are treated while we're sitting on the plane and all the rookies parade down the aisle headed to their seats. Yeah, fun for you. And then what they do is they get them all together once they get to the hotel and then they take them out to dinner somewhere to a really nice steak restaurant so everybody can see them. So they can't change before they, they can't go. change. They can't change. They gotta wear, they got to wear it out. Looking to an expensive steak restaurant dressed as a Muppet. I think the worst for those uh, rookies is when they do it and they go to Chicago at the end of the year and they oh, pop yeah. them off about three or four blocks from the hotel and they got to walk down Michigan Avenue to get to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got to admit to you, man, that is somewhat uncomfortable for me to watch. You, you know, don't like that? Oh, man. <laughs> Too much skin? I, I just feel bad for him. <laughs> so here's Freddie Freeman now. They'll play the shift on the infield. Two out base runner for the Braves. And Freeman had a rip 0 and 1. He's handled Freeman a couple of times here tonight. Well, actually, one time he struck him out and he walked him the other time. He's thrown Freeman some outstanding breaking balls. 82 extra base hits this year already for Freddie Freeman. The 0 1. Swing and a miss. 94 0 and 2. First team advantage brings you the scouting report. And the Braves, well, they have very little power against lefties. 59 and a half at bats per home run. That's worse in the American and National League, Major League Baseball. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. He dusted him 95 up at the letters. Raymond goes down on strikes. Here you go, Mario. One more look no, for you. No, I don't want to look. Look, Mario. Stop. Look, Mario. Just enough of this, please. please. No. The baseball uniforms never felt Holy so good, smokes. did they? Stop it. It's a bad look. <laughs>
The final weekend of Turner Field and Dale Murphy taking down the number three, which signifies just two games left for this ballpark. Of course, Dale Murphy wore the number three here in Atlanta. He played 15 seasons for the Braves, and Rod, he could just flat out play. Man, he had 371 home runs, man, and he was legit in center field. He was an outstanding player. I mean, back in the day when the Braves were pretty much the only game in town on television, obviously those that grew up watching baseball would watch Dale Murphy play and he was a outstanding baseball player. And we've got a wall side windows pitching change now Braves go back to the bullpen it's Brandon kind of checking in and kind of pitching in his 15th contest this year he's logged 15 total innings the ERA sits at 4.20 13 strikeouts nine walks uh, the nine walks very high for the limited innings uh, that couldn't have, have pitched this year. Five nothing is our score. The first one yeah. is a strike on Ian Kinsler. Is actually pronounced Kniff. Kniff has uh, three pitches. And thank you for the pronunciation. Uh, 92 with the fastball. Slider 34 percent of the time he'll throw that, and he has a changeup. So basically, fastball slider for Kniff. 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 One ball, one strike. Uh, Kinsler. Ian has a homer ground out strikeout and he shoots one foul back out of play. Let's take a look at the big boy big play of the game. It happened in the very first inning. It was Ian Kinsler standing in the batter's box and he connected for his 40th leadoff home run of his major league career. Ten years in Texas three years in Detroit. The 34 year old Ian Kinsler just getting better. Like fine wine, getting better with age. It's been fun to watch. He got him looking that time. Kinsler did not like the call, but he will tote his bat back to the bench. One away here in the sixth. That'll bring him Cameron Maven. Maven is one for three, singled in that first inning, and then came around in the two-run shot by Miguel Cabrera. Maven has been quite the difference maker and for that Tigers lineup when he has been healthy and playing in that number two spot. He really yeah. has solidified that part of the batting order. And Kinsler, Maven, Miggy. They really got off on the recent home stand, too. All three had nice home stand. Tigers is a team batted 356 on the home stand. Ooh, look out. Oh, you hate to see that, man. That's what got Castellanos earlier this year. Anytime you get it in the hand, man, there's just no padding. Kevin Rand wasted little time in coming out of the dugout. That's the same hand that uh, was bothering Maben and landed him on the disabled list with that thumb injury. That left hand. Down to first he goes. Tigers have a runner now with one out here in the sixth and here is Miguel Cabrera. And Freddie Freeman over at first base and talking with his former teammate Cameron Maven making sure he's OK. And we told you that the Tigers could run on Flowers the catcher. He has not been very good this year as a matter of fact he's been very poor. He's only thrown out three of 63, and of course, Cameron Maben is a threat to run. Ball one. Big, big day for Miguel. Two run homers, solo homers, single, three runs scored. And then Mickey now 38 home runs. He's gone over 100 RBIs 12 times in his career. 
Driven to right field on a line. Marcakis will make the play. Two gone. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by the San Bernstein Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Chevrolet, more than you expect or less than you imagine. Back here in Atlanta, where the Tigers are. Well, they got off to a great start and they continue to hold on to that lead five to nothing as they bat here in the sixth with Martinez up there and a man at first base. Been a good night and a good start to this series for the Tigers. There's a strike called on JD. Tigers just flat out need to win every game they can here down the stretch. They've got two more here in Atlanta. And the possibility of a makeup game on Monday against the Indians. A little bit outside. Didn't miss by much. Ground out, fly out, strike out for JD. Dave is still holding that hand. Swing and a miss. Kniff put a wrinkle in that one. The count one and two. Tigers tonight about hit the Braves 9 4. Got him in the outside corner. Caught him looking. JD is 0 for 4 tonight. That'll end the top of the sixth. Daniel Norris charging back out to the mound. Up 5 0. Bale Tire pitch by pitch. Norris has been outstanding through five today, scattering four hits. That fastball has had another gear up in the strike zone. Several strikeouts on this explosive fastball, 95 miles an hour. Also fielding his position. This was the beginning of the game. Also, nice breaking ball thrown to some of the left handers tonight. Real nice job through five today for the Tigers rookie, Daniel Norris. He's got himself four strikeouts, a couple of walks, and allowing just the four hits. And now back to the mound he goes. It'll be Matt Kemp, who has given the ball a ride a couple of times. Not deep enough, though. That little motion that uh, Daniel Norris has been doing all game long with his hand in his glove, just kind of motioning with the arm as to tell himself to finish the pitches. Make sure you get on that front side and finish your pitches. Man, has it worked very well for him tonight. We've got action. It is Shane Green warming up. 
So we got what 86 now for Norris. That has been the one area of his game the Tigers would like to see him improve on going deeper into contests. Uh, but what he's given them so far has just been uh, outstanding nonetheless. He'll get better at that. Pitching into the sixth in this game. That's fouled back out of play. Has not been afraid to go inside to Freeman and Kemp, a couple of dangerous bats. Matt Kemp has made all star teams. He's won a couple gold gloves playing center field for the Los Angeles Dodgers. A couple of silver slugger awards as well. Into the glove for strike three, a foul tip. Another strikeout for Norris. James McCann has done a really nice job leading uh, Norris here tonight. Lots of fastballs up. Got Kemp to chase that one. Here is Nick Markakis. Strikeout pop up tonight for Markakis. Ben's in for a strike on the outer edge. Here's one guy that I thought we'd never see in another uniform other than the Baltimore Orioles. He just seemed like he was a perfect fit for that organization and a guy that would spend his entire career there. Well, Marcakis signed a four year deal, but he was a fixture nine seasons in Baltimore. I mean, when you get close to spending a decade with a team it, it always seems like he's going to be there the rest of his career and it was a nice relationship here's the 0 2 Norris missed way too high there one ball two strikes well Daniel can go one of two ways now he can either go with the fastball up in the strike zone that he's gotten the majority of his strikeouts on today or he can go with a slow breaking ball disguise it like it's going to be a strike and make sure he gets it away from Marcakis to get strike three but they're going to go another fastball here he just overthrew those last two yeah way out of the strike zone calm yourself down Flowers on deck, two balls, two strikes on Marcakis. Career numbers 156 home runs. And a solid 289 lifetime average, and down he goes. That is three straight strikeouts now for the lefty Norris. Six in the ball game for Daniel, two gone. Another fastball upstairs. is a single in his first at bat really not too many uh, scoring opportunities for the Braves in this game yeah. and a couple of two out hits in the second failed to score leadoff single in the third couldn't score Braves have had only two advanced with men in scoring position in this game that's how good Daniel's been tonight Really, only one stressful inning, and that was the third inning. He is 17 of 24 in first pitch strikes so far tonight. And this Braves offense was sizzling hot. You know we talked about that at the top of the show. I mean, this is a team that a lot of people were saying coming in, look out, man, they're going to play some pretty good baseball in the final three days. And last month, September. Major leagues. I mean, it ranks very highly in several categories. One and two on the former White Sox catcher Tyler Flowers. Swing and a miss, and Daniel Norris strikes out the side here in the sixth. He has punched out seven in this ball game. Kemp goes down. See you later, Marquez. 
And Flowers to strike out the side. It's time now for T-Mobile's greater coverage of baseball as we check out around the major league some of the big stories the Yankees eliminated from playoff contention last night even though they had uh, pretty good numbers since the All-Star break Joey Votto man he's been hot he always takes off the second half of the year hitting 400 second half with an on base percentage of nearly 500 for Votto Bryce Harper back in the lineup after injuring his thumb he missed the last four games. And uh, that's what's going on around the big leagues. In the meantime, Justin Upton leads it off for the Tigers as we go to the seventh. That Washington Nationals team kind of limping into the playoffs. Well, they lost Ramos, right? Yeah, no Strasburg and uh, Harper just back today after missing four days with a thumb injury. Jay up on base three times tonight as he backs out of there and a ball inside. But I guess every team has their issues at this time of year. There are several. The teams dealing with some injuries. And even the guys that are still in the lineup are all banged up. You got to believe that. No doubt. After 162 games, a little pop up foul. Get some more lumber. Let's take a look at uh, Justin Upton in his couple of uh, at bats today. He drove one down the right field line his first time up. That was a double. I mean, just an outstanding at bat by Justin, basically taking what Matt Wilson, the starter, was giving him. And then they had a huge hole because they were playing him to pull. Same type of approach, hit that ball right between first and second. So nice day so far for Justin. You see his hits by direction, 32 to right field this year. Held up and he did, said first base umpire Vic Carapaza. Two and two on Justin. Meanwhile, how about Daniel Norris? Man, he has struck out the last four batters. He has scattered four hits. I mean, in the biggest game of his career. I mean, this guy's pitching like no problem. I know it. It's, it really is amazing. I mean, we are talking about a guy that really pitched the entire second half of the year last year, knowing. That he had cancer, right? Which is amazing in itself. He had that, of course, taken care of in the offseason. He's only 23 years old. And for Brad Osmus, uh, the comfort of knowing that at the very least, anybody he sends out there is going to keep their team in the game. Thyroid, th thyroid cancer, for those of you that didn't know. Daniel Norris has a unique outlook on life. You know, he's just one of those guys that loves to live every day and makes the most of every day. It's awfully refreshing too to see somebody that young 
to grasp that concept. Two and two on Justin Upton. Off the outside part of the plate, three and two. Upton Castellanos and McCann here in the seventh. Tigers up five to nothing. And they've not been challenged to this point tonight. Uh -oh. There's a drive in the air to deep left. This ball is going to go. It's gone. Another home run for Justin Upton. We just showed you an illustration of Justin Upton taking a couple of balls the opposite way, a double down the right field line, a single to right field as well. When you show the opposing team that you're willing to do that, then they will start to give you some pitches like they gave to Justin Upton so that he could do what he really wants to do, and that's hit the ball to left field and hit the ball into the seats. That's 12th home run of the month of September. It's unbelievable. Isn't he, though? It's just unreal. But how fast do these balls get out of the ballpark, though? Here's a fastball that is right down the middle in a real short, quick, compact swing by Justin. And he just dropped the bat. How many people in the month of April and May and even into June thought that Justin Upton would hit 30 home runs by the end of the year? He has, though. You see him drop the bat? Take a look at him. Is this the equivalent of, like, dropping the mic? Check him out though. Now watch him though. Right here. Boom. Yeah. He's got some style now. He does. If you can do it, it ain't bragging. Tigers have hit four home runs tonight. Curly Fries and then some. Here are the uh, September numbers now updated. 12 homers, 27 driven in, but more than that, 310. I mean, he's coming off winning player of the week last week. And he might just be the player of the month in the American League. Castellanos takes the ball outside. Not many of could have had better months than Justin Upton. What is the last time he has hit a cheap home run that barely scraped over the wall? The hit speed on that last one probably was 108, 109. Every time he does barrel up something and he hits it out of the ballpark, his hit speed is well up in 108, 109, 110 mile per hour range. Nick takes outside, two and two. Tigers came in here flexing their muscles tonight. Kinsler, Upton, and two for Miggy. Here's the 2 2. Driven to right field on a line. Marquez will go back to the warning track. Another hard hit ball, one gone here in the seventh. Well, it's nice to see this kind of offensive production and knowing the fact that you're not going to have your everyday designated hitter, and that would be Victor Martinez. And Brad said, not only do we lose a designated hitter, he says we lose our best left handed batter when Victor Martinez is not able to play. Justin Upton just gave that young man a bat. He doesn't know what to do with himself. Good for him. I wouldn't either. Good for him. Look at him, high fives all the way up. Goodness. Look at him. Can't make a better memory than that. He'll sleep with that bat tonight. He can't wait to show somebody. Mom or dad. Shallow right field. Marquez again. And McCann is up. Look at that. Got a fan for life. Got pine tar on it and everything, Dad. Is that for me? Sure is. <laughs> He's got his Tigers gear and everything. Yeah, he does. Upton gets it, doesn't he? He sure does. A lot of Tiger fans here in Atlanta. Tiger fans are everywhere, though. That is true. There's a strike called on Iglesias. Now, where's he going? He had a road trip to get down there to get that bat from <laughs> Justin, didn't he? He's apparently sitting in the upper deck <laughs> and ran all the way downstairs. <laughs> oh, and two on Iglesias. Still walking.
Daniel Norris just uh, had a really long conversation with uh, Brad Ausmus you know, before he went to the on deck circle. And I don't know for sure what Brad told him, but he may have told him, you know what? You've already swung the bat a couple times tonight. Mm -hmm. Next time you go up here, we got a six run lead. Just leave it on your shoulders. Yep. You never know. And, you know what? If he told him that, I wouldn't fault him. No. Bigger picture. Swing and a miss. So Glacius strikes out. That'll be a Tigers get another run and a fan for life as well. Justin Upton goes deep. His 30th of the year. And then makes a memory for a young man by saying, here you go, young fella. Coming up, the McLaren Health Plan. Seventh inning stretch. Seventh inning stretch where the Tigers are enjoying a six to nothing lead. Thank you, Justin Upton, for adding to that lead. A solo home run in the top of the seventh inning. Here is our game summary. Miguel Cabrera, another big night, sixth multi homer game this season. And really, Rob, when you look at the stars of this game, yes, the offense has been great. They showed up early, but Daniel Norris, man, what more can you say? Well, he's my guy. You know, I chose him at the beginning of the contest, so he's been sensational tonight, and more than likely, he's going to be the player of the game. Yeah, but I took Miggy. I know you took Miggy, <laughs> but Daniel's been the story. You just said Daniel was a story. I know, I did. <laughs> you shot your own self. I did. Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, Detroit's number one mascot, Paws, is available to appear at your next special event. Bring Major League fun to birthdays, parties, corporate events, parades, and school functions. If you'd like to book the best mascot in the land, book pause for your next special event. Visit Tigers.com slash pause. Here is activity in the Detroit bullpen. And the last moment up the left is Kyle Ryan. The right-hander is Shane Green. Second time Green has been up. Ryan, he just joined Shane in the bullpen. Bill Meyer looking on. Tigers bullpen coach. So Norris struck out the side of the sixth. He's at 97 pitches. And it's going to be Dansby Swanson to lead it off. Bottom three, Swanson. Castro, pitcher spot. Tigers got three in the first. And it brought the Tomahawk shot down. Yeah, they brought him out every half inning, hadn't done a whole lot, so. Back in, back in the 90s, this place used to jump, man. Wow. And they were good. Oh, the Braves boy. were good, man. 
many championships did they win in a row? Well, they won 14 straight divisions if you didn't count the 94 season, in which the uh, that was a strike year. I mean, 14 straight division titles. They won one World Series in that span. They had some good players here, led by Smoltz and Glavin and Maddox, the Hall of Fame manager and Bobby Cox, the Jones brothers, Chipper and Andrew. And then they were just filling in every other spot, Mario, with whoever else. And these guys just won. Didn't matter. It didn't matter whoever they played. Pendleton was also on that team. He is the still coaching for Atlanta as well. Norris missing up and in. One ball in. One strike on Swanson. Here's Terry Pendleton. Played some third base. He's a good, good player. Good player. Here's the 1 1. Tom Glavin is here uh, broadcasting tonight. We were talking about Daniel Norris today. He was asking me about Daniel Norris. And I gave him a nice scouting report on Daniel. I told him Daniel was outstanding, and Daniel has not disappointed me tonight. Just Mr. Tom Glavin sitting in the center there. He's in the Hall of Fame. Norris overthrowing, missing high. You know, Glavin was just pretty much an average pitcher, Mario, until he started throwing his changeup really? to left handed batters. You know, it used to be a taboo if you were left-handed to throw a changeup to a left-handed batter because it's right down where they like to swing the bat. But he started throwing that changeup, and his career just took off to win 300 games. We were talking about that the other day. Who is going to be the next 300-game winner in the big leagues? Here's a swing and a foul back. Well, 300 now as you as you look at it, and you look at some of the guys that are the closest in the low 200s. That's an awfully lofty number now. I mean, that used to be the barometer for a starting pitcher to get some consideration for the Hall of Fame, but they're going to have to change because it's not looking like many guys are going to get 300 wins now. Swing and a miss. Boy, Norris feeling it now. Five straight strikeouts, eight punchouts total. How about back in 2008? Here. This guy was pretty good. He was good. He's in the Hall of Fame too. Struck him out. John Smoltz. His 3,000 strikeout. Smoltz. History in Atlanta. And what made him so special is he was dominant as a starter and dominant as a closer. And he's a Spartan fan, right? He is a Spartan fan. There, there you go. 29, John Smoltz. 3,011 strikeouts atop the. Charts in Braves history. Here's Daniel Castro. Of course, some people may not know that John Smoltz was a minor league player in the Tigers organization before being traded for Doyle Alexander. Popped up. Who wants it? Somebody take it. Daniel Norris is going to have to catch it. Well, oh, he can. There's no problem. Daniel doing it. So they had trouble seeing that ball. Had to because Ian Kinsler would have caught the ball. Maybe he would have caught it. Let's take a look. Well, Daniel right now saying, anybody? Anybody? All right, I'll do it myself. Six and look at that uh, total 73 against 33. Had a feeling that uh, Mr. Norris would show up here tonight and pitch a really good game against Atlanta. Here is Brandon Snyder. He'll look at a ball outside. Every one of his pitches have worked for him today. He hasn't thrown many changes, but the breaking ball, uh, the slider, and also the fastball have been you know, the primary three pitches that he has used. And to scatter four hits against this Braves team, which offense came in hot. They had won, what, 10 of the last 11 games? 10 of 11. There's action in their bullpen. Jenkins, the right hander. Norris, meanwhile, has established a season high. There's his 109th pitch. Look at him, man. He is over 100 pitches, 109 to be exact, and still throwing 95 miles an hour. 
He's on a mission out there, isn't he? It, he looks like it. The look in his eye. Eight strikeouts tonight. Swing and a miss. He wants another strikeout. He wants to end his night with another strikeout so he can skip off that mound again. I have a feeling he's going to get it. Rich Doobie has to be ecstatic. Think he'd give us a ride back to the hotel in Shaggy tonight? <laughs> there's, there's a pull up on <laughs> three and two. I call a shotgun if he does. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to roll. I just want to ride in Shaggy one time. Shaggy. <laughs> That's his fans, man. Yeah, it is. Oh, man. Three and two. That's the last time you think somebody named their car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> Full count remains on Snyder. I like him a lot, though. He's a real cool dude. Real down to earth. Really down to earth. You know, if, if you do an interview with Morris, you just get the feeling that this guy's a real deep thinker, just in the way he answers questions. I mean, he respects everybody, looks you in your eye, talks to you, speaks to you. He gets it for a young kid. Meanwhile, uh, Snyder giving him a fit here as he tries to close out this inning. Six in a row retired by left-hander Norris. Five of those via the strikeout. And again, the 3 2. High drive into deep center field, way back, and that ball is gone. Ooh, that's a big fight. He absolutely crushed that. Snyder's fourth home run of the year, and the Braves are on the board. Six one. going to be it. So Norris is not going to be able to get seven complete in this game but still a marvelous outing a season high 114 pitches and he'll get some big time handshakes when he gets back to the Tigers dugout. We'll be back. Field, of course, has seen its share of great pitching. Brad Osmus used to come here regularly as a player. I asked him about the prospects back then of facing the Braves' big three, Glavin and Smoltz and Maddox, and 
he kind of said it wasn't any fun. The, the good thing about facing Maddox was that you know it was going to be a relatively quick game. But he said Glavin absolutely owned him. He said he had the worst record of anybody versus anybody in his matchups with Tom Glavin. Two for 43. We looked it up as we were in his office. He can remember the two hits that he had against Tom Glavin. Of course, we've seen great pitching for so long here. And the first time the Tigers came here way back in 1997, Greg Maddox started against the Tigers. And Detroit won that night, September 1st, 97. Todd Jones finished it. We had uh, Todd Jones as a guest on Tigers Live earlier tonight. All right. All right, Keats, thanks. In the meantime, Ryan coming out of the bullpen now to try and get this final out. The home run by Snyder has put the Braves on the board 6-1. to one. It was funny listening to Brad today talk about uh, what he was able to do against Glav and the two hits. He knew exactly <laughs> where they went <laughs> and exactly what the pitches were. Yeah, he said a blue to hit. left yeah. and a double to right. Two for 43, but a lot of folks had trouble with Glav. Actually had better numbers against Maddox. One ball and one strike. Little chopper back to the mound. Kyle Ryan has it. And that'll be that. So they get a run in the home run by Snyder. You're watching Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Time. Is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows. We can do that. We are the factory. Nice night here in Atlanta where the Tigers are opening up their final weekend series of the year here against the Braves. And they lead this one by a score of 6-1. to one. And we've got a new pitcher now. It's going to be Tyrell Jenkins. And Tyrell Jenkins pitched in 50. He's pitched 51 in the third innings this year. The ERA is approaching 6. So he hasn't been very good. But you see where his issues are. Uh, it's the walk count. 33 walks. 26 strikeouts. So he has... An issue throwing the ball over the plate. Norris due up. He will not bat. It'll be Eric Ibar who began the season here at Atlanta. He will pinch hit and Ibar looks at a ball outside. Ibar actually hitting for Ryan. So Ryan, I beg your pardon. No doubt. I got you back. Ryan came in for that final out. Ibar and then Kinsler and Maben. There's a strike on the outer edge. And Ibar spent the uh, first part of the season with the Atlanta Braves after spending a decade with the Los Angeles Angels. And he was happy to join the Tigers. High fly ball center field playable for Inciarte. Nestle into his glove for out number one. 
Ooh, we're tied at three now. Boston has tied it up in the bottom of the seventh inning at Fenway. That's good news. Let's go, Big Poppy. Jays had a three to one lead for most of that game. Here is Ian Kinsler now with one out. Ball missing outside, 1 0. And Jenkins has a fastball that will get up to 92. On occasion, he'll get to 93. He also throws a curveball and a changeup. No slider. A base hit to left field for Kinsler. One on, one out. Time for a game break now. We check in with Johnny Kane. All right, good news there, Johnny. Cameron Maben fouls it off at home plate. Orioles in Toronto came in tied for the wild card, each at 87 and 72. Tigers trying to win their 86th game of the year here tonight. Trailing by a game and a half with the potentially that makeup game against the Indians on Monday. Jenkins missing low and outside. Jenkins acquired for the Cardinals with Shelby Miller back in November of 2014. In the air toward right center field in Ciarte with a long run. Tracks it down. And the throw nearly got him. I was talking to Dave Clark today about MCR and He was talking about this cat is an outstanding defender in center field. Uh, and he nearly doubled up Ian Kinsler here with an outstanding throw. He has 10 assists this year. Well, he had 10 assists last year for Arizona, but a good defender. Pretty close. Two outs now for Cabrera. Big night for Miggy. Three out of four. The average now at 316, 38 home runs. He's going to get to 40 before the series is over, isn't he? He could, man. He could very easily get there. The way he's been swinging the bat the last couple of days. I mean, really, you just watch the way that Miguel has played the last couple of weeks when he hasn't been really hitting and driving balls. He's been making really good decisions and running the bases, and it appears his teammates, they just kind of feed off of him. Whatever he does, they do. Flowers out to the mound to talk with Jenkins now. Jenkins must be hurt. Yeah. He's got to be hurt. Oh, look at this. Big Poppy is homered. I ask and you shall receive. And Boston is now leading Toronto 5 to 3 in the bottom of the seventh. I just told Big Poppy to do something. Got a little shortwave radio going with him or something? I wish I did. Let's see what's going on here with Jenkins. It just doesn't look right. And now they're going to take him out of the game. So the Braves now will have a pitching change. Jenkins out of the game. We'll be back.
one app for live baseball. Enjoy game day, live game video highlights, Satcast news, and more. Get MLB.com and Pat on your favorite devices now. As uh, Justin Upton continues to scrutinize his bat, we have a new pitcher now for the Atlanta Braves. That'll be John Gant. And Gant will get as much time as he needs to get loose. Yeah, with the injury and yeah, coming to Jenkins. He's been in 19 games, 48 and two thirds innings, ERA approaching five. And 47 strikeouts, 21 base on balls for Gant. Well, just like we promised you earlier in the game, it is Miller time and it is brought to you by Miller Light. In case you missed it early, uh, Miguel Cabrera has been on one tonight, his very first at bat tonight. He got himself a fastball from Matt Whistler and hit it over the center field wall for a two run shot. And then his next at bat, he got another pitch pretty much in the same area and did the exact same thing. So Miguel's had a special night tonight. So Cabrera in his first half 18 home runs second half 18 home runs but the average much higher here in the second half 340 for Cabrera. He's awfully consistent isn't he. Always has been the RBI is just about even. And Cabrera waiting on Gant to finish up his warm up tosses. Three out of four tonight two over single three RBIs. Let's take a look at Miguel on the two home run balls. I mean, basically the same swing, very identical. Stride comes up, comes down. Now the bat knob leads. The bat gets into the hitting zone, and that ball goes straight away center field. Look at one of these. His foot is off the ground initially when he makes contact on the one on the right. But these are two identical swings. The head directly down on the baseball. And man, has he done a lot of damage here tonight. Really, he's done a lot of damage in his big league career. The only time they've gotten him out was a line drive hit the Marcakis in his last at bat. We're in the eighth. Tigers lead six to one. Two outs and a runner at first. And Cabrera backs out of there one and zero. Oh. Tigers another multi or double digit hit game I should say 11 hits in this one here tonight and counting and can't features a fastball he also has a curveball and a changeup he really likes his changeup he throws that about 22 percent of the time top fastball about 91. He came over from the Mets system. A trade last July. Here's the 2 1, and it's popped up mile high, right side of the infield. Long run, and it's going to be tracked down by Castro. Ending over, no runs in, one man left.
the Division Series games at Comerica are on sale now. Tickets sold exclusively at Tigers.com. Tigers doing their part tonight. Trying to stay in the wild card race. They lead here 6-1. to one. As we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, Tigers have a new pitcher now. It'll be the right-hander. Bruce Rondon coming out of the Tigers bullpen. And Bruce Rondon has pretty much solidified that eighth inning for the Tigers the last couple of weeks. And he's done a marvelous job. He has six holes this year. The ERA sits at 2.88. The work is under one. 42 strikeouts for Rondon. Only 12 base on balls. Take a look at that bottom note. Not an extra base hit in his last 15 and two-thirds innings. I call that getting it done. Now yeah, Bruce here in the eighth facing the two three and four men so he'll have to do some heavy lifting here you got Freeman and Kemp coming up this inning. And he'll pour a fastball in there at ninety six. And you run Dones fastball will go anywhere from ninety six up to hundred miles an hour. He's got a good slider he's got a change up too, but doesn't use that very often. The 0 one. Adonis Garcia is one for three singled in his last at bat. Then Freeman then Kemp. Brad probably needs to get Francisco Rodriguez in the game. It's been a while yeah. since he's pitched. He hasn't pitched since uh, that blown save. I Saturday. Believe. Yeah five days ago. Actually longer than that. Now the one one. Pulled foul. One ball, two strikes on Garcia. Bruce Rondon takes over for Kyle Ryan, who got the final out of the seventh. The story tonight, though, was Daniel Norris had his eight strikeouts, allowing just the one run, the home run to Snyder. Ooh, out up and in. And yeah, the home, yeah, the home run that Snyder hit was the final pitch of the evening for Daniel Norris. Freeman on deck. Swing and a miss. Ooh, that's nasty. Got him chase. Take a look at this slider thrown by Rondon. Garcia had no chance. Bottom fell in that slider. It'll bring up Freddie Freeman. Tigers will move Castellanos to the other side of the infield now. Nick in short right. Iglesias stays home on the left side of the infield. Freeman punching out twice against the starter Norris. Daniel walked him once. Yeah, Daniel did a nice job against Freeman. Yeah, Freeman has been one of the hottest hitters in the majors. Second half of the season. Some of those scores out of town. We were keeping up today on that Boston Toronto game. That's gone to the top of the eighth now. And Seattle has started their game against Oakland up 2 nothing in the bottom of the first. Baltimore trying to put the finishing touches on a win at Yankee Stadium. Fouled away. Different scenarios still remain for the Tigers. If they win here tonight and Toronto ends up losing that game in Boston, they would be a half game with that extra game possibility against the Cleveland Indians. It's a high drive in the air to left center. It's playable. Maybe it is under. And Freeman is out, two gone. Here is the upcoming matchup presented by Gordon Chevrolet for game two in this series. The Tigers will be going to Jordan Zimmerman in the second game facing Aaron Blair. And Blair has a one in seven record with an earned run average that's over eight. 
Yeah, Jordan Zimmerman got off to a spectacular start in the month of April. As a matter of fact, he was picture of the month. And but a couple of different stints on the disabled list for Jordan and has really uh, kind of short circuited his season. His first in a Tigers uniform, but he really threw the ball well in his last outing. He threw three innings in relief, and Zim did a nice job. And that's the reason why Brad is elected to give him the start. Matt Kemp batting with two outs. Swing and a miss out in front. It's been a good pitch tonight for Rondon to go with that upper 90s heater. Well, you have to respect the fastball because Rondon throws so hard. So that's what you have to look for. And when he throws those sliders and he's locating them the way that he's able to to the right handed hitters, you're going to see some uncomfortable swings. Two and one. Tigers have never trailed tonight, and that simply is because Kinsler let off the game with a home run. And then Cabrera followed in that inning with a two run shot. And then Cabrera homered again. And then Upton homered. 6 1 Tigers. High drive into deep left. That ball is way back. Upton looks up, and it is gone. Solo shots here. Not much damage. 6 2. It's the 35th home run of the year and for Matt Kent. It's a fastball that is right down the middle. It's up in the strike zone. And he hit it and he knew it was gone. Over his best friend's head, Justin Upton. 35 RBI number 108 for Kemp. Here is Nick Marcakis. He's had a big month of September as well. 22 home runs. Or RBI, I should say. 30. 35th. Home run of the season. Nine home runs in the month of September. Be a lot of home runs for one month. It really is. It's fouled back out of play. But that's the one thing that uh, is up across the board this year. I mean, home runs are way up for a lot of guys, a lot of teams. Maybe a record set of home runs this year. We've talked about all the second basemen that have had uh, record type years in homers. Yeah, Dozier has 40, Odor has 30. Kinsler's closing in on 30. And you got several second basemen that have hit 20 or more this season. That used to be the table center position. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. That's the final now. Baltimore has defeated the New York Yankees 8 1. So now, as we look at the standings as it stands right now, Baltimore has the half game lead on Toronto for the wild card. The top wild card that is. And there's Frankie Rodriguez starting to warm up as you predicted. One ball, two strikes on Marcakis. Two out solo shot for Kemp. And the one two. Don't get the first two outs, but now Homer hit batter. Grazed him. Yep, grazed him on the left knee. It's going to bring Rich Doobie out.
Bay Tigers fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all-new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Detroit and Tigers baseball with you wherever you go. Tom Lockchop try to bring their team back. Tyler Flowers will stand in. Where is they where are they moving the new ballpark to? Do you know? The area? Cobb County. Cobb County? This ballpark really hasn't been here that long. No, it really hasn't. It was uh, constructed in 1996 for the Olympics. Originally had uh, about 85,000 seats, then reduced when the Braves moved in in 97. Centennial Olympic Stadium. The uh, new ballpark about 20 miles north of where this one sits. Ooh, ugly. Tried to hold up, couldn't do it. 1 1. Final season of Turner Field, 97 to 2016. I guess they outgrew it. Well, I think there are 13 stadiums that are actually younger than this ballpark. Or this is younger than 13 stadiums, I meant to say. There's a ball that just missed. And yet, a new ballpark coming up for the Braves. And Fulton County was right across the street where the Braves used to play. So the Braves have been playing in the same general area for the last half a century. Rondon missing again, and now the count goes to three and one. Well, this might be it for Rondon if he loses Flowers. Yeah, and you can tell that uh, Brad's getting a little bit antsy here. He got the first two batters. That's why he's got his closer warming up. But I don't think Brad wanted to go to Rodriguez today for four outs. Upton though and he'll make the catch. They get a run on the home run by Kemp and that's it. Bank game summary Tigers with four home runs in this particular contest Ian Kinsler led off the game with his 40th leadoff home run Miguel Cabrera also played long ball in the third inning as a matter of fact Miguel Cabrera has hit two home runs in this game both of them to the exact same spot straightaway center field and Justin Upton he connected for his 30th homer of the season his 12th home run in the month of September he has been carrying the team on certain nights. There are your totals right now. Six runs, 11 hits, nine left for the Tigers. Two runs, six hits, seven left for the Atlanta Braves. Game one in the series. Tigers try to win their 86th 
of the season. They're 85 73 coming in. So as we go to the ninth inning, it'll be J.D. Martinez facing John Gant. Gant came on to get the final out of the eighth, and now he goes to work here in the ninth. It'll be Martinez, Upton, Castellanos. And so far, J.D. 0 for 4 tonight. He'd like to get in on the action. Tigers have 11 hits total this evening. Martinez in search of a hit. Not often the Tigers have 11, and J.D. doesn't have at least one. Swinging a foul tip. What do you got on Gant delivery? I don't think this is one we need to teach to the little kids. I'm going to take another look at it. You haven't seen it yet? Check this thing. What's going on here? I don't know, but check him out there. A rocking edge. Start. Stop. Start. Pitch. <laughs> Have you seen anything like that before? Uh, no. Really odd. That is really, really strange. Rocking back and forth. I wonder when you decide you're going to do something like I this. I don't know. <laughs> and who looks at that and says, yeah, that's okay. Two balls, two strikes. Well, apparently it's worked because yeah. he is pitching in the big league. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Won 11 games as a starter a couple of years back in Savannah, and that was back in 2014. And John Gant born in Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Darting low. You ever been in Savannah? I have. I used to be in the uh, in Double A. Oh, okay. Spectacular city. Southern League. Hot in Savannah, Georgia, too. Man. Lose a few pounds that during the summer. League was hot, man. Yeah. Fun bus rides, huh? Oh, my goodness. JD strikes out swinging. One gone. Well, Upton from 08 until last year was averaging about 23 and a half homers a year. He's got 30 now this year. You can see the RBIs are up. And again, if you would have asked somebody, a Tigers fan, in April or May, if he would approach his averages leading up to this year, they probably would have said he's nuts. Yep. He was struggling that much, and then, you know, the strikeouts were piling up, but uh, Upton never really got down on himself. You know, that's why a lot of managers, a lot of hitting coaches, a lot of pitching coaches, when certain guys are having difficult years, and say that guy has a track record, like Justin Upton has a track record. He's been in the big leagues for a long time, so you pretty much know what his numbers are across the board. That's when they say he's pretty much going to get back to wherever he's been his entire career because that's usually how it averages out. And when the Tigers signed Upton, they knew at times he could be a streaky player, both good and bad. Rolled slowly to the shortstop, Swanson. Two gone. Well, we're seeing the good part now for Upton because he's been on a tear in September. It'll bring up Castellanos. Nick is one for four. Singled back in the third. He's hit the ball to right field his last two times up. Braves have the bottom three due up when we get to the bottom of the ninth. Yeah. Strike one on Nick. And yeah, Boston Red Sox still beating the Toronto Blue Jays in the eighth inning tonight. Bottom of the eighth inning. So three more outs to go for Boston. To help out the Tigers tonight. And this is a fun weekend. Oh, this yeah. is what. They anticipated it, and this is what they wanted when they added the second wild card. They're going to love it. This is really when you start scoreboard watching, and you're not doing it casually. You're doing it like inning by inning to find out what those other teams are doing. And down goes Castellanos. He strikes out to win the inning. 
Gant with a 1 2 3 9. Frankie will be coming on in the bottom of the ninth inning. Two in favor of the Tigers. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Tigers keeping an eye on this game. Boston now top of the ninth inning, 5 3 over the Blue Jays. Let us hope that score holds up. In the meantime, Francisco Rodriguez will take over for the Tigers. Not a closing situation for Rodriguez. Tigers have a four run lead here, bottom half of the ninth inning, but he hasn't pitched in about six days, so he needed to get some work. Meanwhile, the Tigers have brought in Andrew Romine to play third base. Castellanos out of the game. It'll be Dansby Swanson to get things started here. Swanson, one out of two, has a single and a walk in this contest. K-Rod trying to get the final three outs. And it's in for a strike. The bottom of the ninth is underway. That's about the best fastball that Rodriguez will feature in 90 miles an hour. And he has a changeup that he throws the majority of the time. Also will mix in a curveball every now and then. And going back to back fastballs to the rookie Dansby Swanson. One ball one strike. Rondone in the eighth inning gave up a two out home run and then hit a batter but was able to get through that frame. He offered strike call. What was that curveball? At 77 miles an hour. Norris started. Got through six and two thirds before Ryan got the final out of the seventh and Bruce in the eighth and now Rodriguez here in the ninth. Here's the one two. Ooh. Two balls two strikes a little bit in. Gastro waiting on deck. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. A strikeout for K Rod. A couple of fastballs to start Swanson off with. Then he threw him a breaking ball, and then he came back with that filthy change piece. Swanson he couldn't stay back long enough. He swung right over the top of it. That's called a straight change, people.
Here is Daniel Castro. That dart slow, just slow. One ball, no strikes. Castro on the ball game is over three. Tigers pitching tonight, giving up six hits, while the Tigers' offense putting up 11 hits and four homers. One one. It's a beautifully located fastball there thrown by and Rodriguez at 89 miles an hour. Oh man. You hear that all the way up here. It looked like it bounced then he ricocheted off uh, DJ Rayburn's mask. One ball, two strikes on Castro. And Frankie staying away, misses way outside. Two balls, two strikes. Malik Smith has moved to the on deck circle with the pitcher spot to next. 6 2, Tigers have the lead here in the bottom of the ninth. Swing and a miss. Frankie. Do it, Frankie. Another strikeout. Two gone. Do it, Frankie. I mean, he gives you a fast arm, but where he holds the baseball, really back in the palm of the hand, and he throws that thing up there, and that bottom just falls out of that change. He's got that high leg kick straight over the top. So here is Smith now, the last chance for the Braves. Daniel Norris, one out away from a victory tonight for the Tigers. The Tigers have won six of Daniel Norris's last seven starts. And you brought it up earlier. I mean, what is it, 19 straight starts now? He yeah. has not given up more than three runs in a game. Three earned runs, pretty impressive. One ball and one strike. That'll miss low. Two and one now. The count and the pinch hitter Smith trying to get it to the top of the order and keep this game alive. Inciarte waiting on deck. Tigers jumped on the Braves early. They have not trailed tonight. They scored three in the first. Now K Rod with the 2 1. Swing and a miss. He wouldn't strike on the side, would he? He sure would. Stand by. All right. Two and two on Malik Smith. Swing and a miss. He strikes out the side, and the Tigers win game one. He did. Daniel Norris gets his fourth win of the season. And here are the up to the minute standings with the Tigers winning here tonight. They now trail by a game pending the outcome of the Toronto Boston game. As the Tigers get yet a little bit closer. Final score tonight Tigers 6-2.